morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday LM virtual lineup. My name is Kristen. I'm Peter. Hi, everyone. And we've got a beautiful lineup for you this morning. We've got five shows. So out of the nine shows that, or seven shows that you've been seeing, we've decided to create this beautiful schedule where we really focus on five. And then the next week, you'll see a different five. So we wanted to share with you that this morning, we're going to be um, starting with uh, Modern Mystics with Andy and Nicholas. And that will be followed by Divine Intervention with Ken and Anna. And after that, you'll see a new show called Free Your Mind with Laverne. And after that, we've got a special feature. We've got a new show called Leap with Susan. And that's going to be with David today. And then following that, our final show of the day is going to be an interview for the Take Me Home documentary with Soren and Francis. Yeah, so thanks so much for joining us. And uh, I think we'll just cross over to Andy now with uh, Modern Mystics. Well, hello, everyone. We've got an intro okay. video that we're just working out the tech with at the moment, but uh, oh, okay. Well, it was one second. Are we live? <laughs> there we go. Oh, this will be fun. Oh, yeah, the intro. We have. <laughs> now just share screen. Okay. Opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger. You start to recognize them as yourself. <laughs> You're not your brother's keeper or your sister's keeper. to realize that you literally are your brother. <laughs> okay, that was worth it. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Modern Mystics with me and my brother Nicholas. Um, as you can see, modern technology is still catching up to modern mysticism, but I hope you enjoyed our new intro. And um, just say hi, Nicholas, so you can. Hello. Hello, everyone again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's... so me and Nicholas, uh, for anyone who's new, me and Nicholas have been high school friends. And we, we started this journey together. And now we seem to live in a spiritual community together. Nicholas is actually in Camas, Utah, and I'm in Mexico here. And um, we have a lot of miracles and parables to share with you on our journey. and. I guess I just wanted to start off by talking a little bit about beliefs, because I know before this show happened, um, the Holy Spirit's helping us unwind our mind from all the beliefs in our mind, because as, as Jesus says in the Course, none of the beliefs that we have in our mind are actually true, because the truth is true and only the truth is true. So, so beliefs are, as Jesus says, illusions. So what happened last night is, I was having a little bit of a hard time to go to sleep. And for me, I seem to have some kind of causation in my mind where it's like, okay, well, if I don't sleep as many hours as I think I need to, then the next day I'm going to be tired. And so I thought, oh, wow, well, if I don't sleep enough, then how am I going to do this show? I'm not going to feel good or anything like that. And what happened was I just realized every time I have a belief like that come into awareness, I just have to be so willing to be wrong about that belief. Because David likes to say there's no causation in the world. So really, sleep can't cause anything. Sleep can't cause a lack of happiness. So I just realized, yeah, whenever something like that comes up for me, I just go into prayer and I meditate and I just tell the Holy Spirit, okay, I'm willing to be wrong. Like, show me that I'm wrong about that. And then I just really prayed that. And then now I actually don't feel tired. And I've had so many of these experiences, especially with sleep, because for me, that was one of the strong beliefs that I had in my mind. And I remember one time I was going to visit my parents in Maryland. And the night before, I, I, was, I was up until like 
2 a.m. or something, and my flight was at 4 or something, so I probably only slept an hour. And I really trusted because I could feel that even the seemingly lack of sleep I was getting was actually the Holy Spirit's guidance. So I trusted, okay, Holy Spirit, this is your guidance. So if I follow it, I have to be happy. You have to show me that by following your guidance, I'm going to be happy. So what happened is with one hour of sleep, I, I took a taxi to the airport and I really prayed and um, I was praying for miracles, basically. And when I got to the airport, I could just feel Hol Holy Spirit so clearly in my mind, just telling me where to go, who to talk to, because I had some extra time between flights. And, and it was so beautiful. Like I felt so happy and I only got one hour of sleep, but I was like radiating and I was just having so much fun with, with all these different holy encounters. And then I... Uh, I took the plane and I met up with my parents and it was so beautiful just seeing them in a completely different light. And then um, I went to a gathering at seven o'clock that night, still not tired at all. You know, you would have think maybe I would crash by then or at least from my past experiences, I would have crashed. But I was still so happy and I didn't feel even to nap or anything like that. And I was just sharing with everyone at this Course in Miracles gathering and my aunt and it was just so much fun. And I think it's really these kind of experiences, these miracles that come in to just really show us through experience that, wow, I was so wrong about all the beliefs in my mind. I was so wrong about everything that I thought was actually true. And these miracles, these shifts in perception, they help unwind our mind, ultimately back to the truth. Oh, that's beautiful. The whole... Uh... <laughs> Well, sleep thing. I I just remember times in in college when I was I was uh, really practicing the course at that time, and and even I remember having like these big assignments due at the very end, and I was just I was feeling like at the end of my college time, <laughs> and and I remember just I was really you know I was doing a workbook lesson every single day because I just felt like I wanted the experience so badly, and. It, you know, it was also quite intense. So I was just like really working through it as best I could. And, and I remember having the, these big assignments that I felt like I couldn't just drop because I wanted to kind of stay in this integrity. And, and yet I wasn't really that inspired. And, and I remember they kind of waited till the last minute. And so I was up like, it was almost like this 48 hour thing of barely getting any sleep. But I just remember like taking time to pause and pray and be shown like, okay, I've heard like that, uh, rest actually comes from waking so I want this actual experience and just it felt actually very gentle and it was kind of the last time I had to really do that but I just remember being shown in that whole experience like that it's just it just comes down to trusting and yeah being willing to be shown and asking for an experience because yeah I felt early on just with this journey um I'm not even sure I'd really heard about the whole thing or just kind of spiritual talk groups, but I knew for myself, like I, I had had so much fear, like for quite a while, especially at the very end of my high school time, just this real dark night of the soul experience that, you know, I just felt like there's got to be a better way. And I remember even like hearing that. And, and so I knew that when the course came into my life, A Course in Miracles, which has been my pathway um, for the last I guess, six years, <laughs> um, I knew that it was all gonna, it's gonna be about an experience. It wasn't gonna be just a reading thing. I mean, I had maybe a little temptations towards that, but I wanted the experience it was pointing to, this sense of consistent peace, this sense of uh, present peace, um, of, you know, effortless happiness of not needing to be afraid of different situations. And, and what I've been shown since, and I feel like that's part of the theme that uh, at least that Andy and I were initially feeling for part of the show is transparency, was it's kind of, it's what I've seen since then is it's through kind of, it's through the darkness to the light. You know, it's, it's facing the fears as guided by the Holy Spirit or Jesus. Um, you know, it's like each step is given and really our, our only job is to take each step. So even with like transparency, it's, it's like, I feel it's the same thing in, in the sense that spirit's just asking us to be transparent with where we're at right now in this very moment, whatever is on our heart uh, and not to 
yeah, and, and really not to hide it. And, and spirit's so gentle because there is this deep fear of being directly connected with Jesus or spirit or God, like having that direct experience. So my, ex my experience has been that, um, at least with Pathway of the Course of Miracles, it's a pathway of relationships. And so the spirit gives these given relationships to us as symbols of the spirit, as something our mind can kind of connect with or, or understand, um, like relate to. And those are the ones where we can really practice like, you know, letting go until we're, you know, and being transparent and authentic in the moment and not hiding anything because it's really, it's symbolic of not hiding something from the spirit, but we're not at least usually at the beginning ready to have that kind of direct experience. So it's more like this gentle inroads that the spirit uses until the mind is ready for like communion. <laughs> so I just, I know lately that's been a huge lesson of mine. Just, uh, I feel like an even deeper lesson because I just keep being shown, like even with willingness, with authenticity, everything is like, I thought I was being authentic. I thought I was being willing. It's like you were, but it's like, it's how deep the rabbit hole goes. You, you know, you can only be as willing or aware of your mind as you are at any time. And it just keeps opening and deepening. And, and really it's unconscious. That's the whole journey, you know, like raising consciousness as I've heard a lot shared or David Hoffmeister share a lot. And uh, just raising the consciousness, which to me, yeah, it literally, it's like an iceberg. You got to raise that iceberg up and, and see it in order yeah, to I think, I think transparency is really important in um, raising that unconscious up to the surface. Because really, when we have these mighty companions, like, of course, Nicholas is one of my mighty companions. And we practice transparency with each other. And it's... like we're living in one of the guidelines is no private thoughts and no, and the other one is no people pleasing so with no private thoughts it's like we have to be transparent with with our brothers and um let's say let's say i'm joining with nicholas over skype and i feel some kind of like judgment upon him or something <laughs> like that some kind of grievance then the no private thoughts is really being willing to just express it to him and since we have the same purpose to really heal our mind then he has that purpose out front and he knows that when i say nicholas i want to express this to you he knows that the reason why i'm expressing this to him is so that i can then expose my unconscious and start to heal my mind so it's like that's already in place so when we talk about no private thoughts no people pleasing you don't just kind of go to the supermarket and just start telling all your judgments to everyone that you have them on, you know, in the supermarket. They don't have any kind of context. You know, and, uh, I know, I know some people have tried that in the past. It, it doesn't go very well, but um, yeah. So going along with the, kind of a theme of relationships as well that you mentioned and, and transparency and mighty companions, it's like on this journey, um, with our desire to awaken, these mighty companions start to join us. And I think one of my first glimpses of that was when I was in high school and um, I was working at a gym. And then this one Hispanic lady started, she came in one day and started to work with us. And um, over the days, I never really talked to her about spirituality and I didn't even really talk to her about anything. But I remember one day there was this other man and he made a comment about me, like to me and, and that, caused some kind of grievance and I, I really felt like I hated him or something and he walked out of the room and the Hispanic lady was there and uh, basically I was expressing to that Hispanic lady all my thoughts and you know this is like this is like I think before the course I was reading disappearance or something but yeah like I said we never talked about spirituality but I was just expressing all my thoughts to her because I felt like I guess in somewhere in my mind I felt like I could trust her she felt like someone that I could really trust, even though I barely knew her for some reason. So I was expressing these thoughts to her about how I felt about this man and on and on. And then I stopped and yeah, she, she said a few comments and then, and then she stopped and she looked me in the eyes and she was like, remember the source. And then she just walked away. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then so I, it didn't hit me at first but i think a couple of minutes later i was like wait what, what did she just say and i was like whoa so that was really 
an expansive experience for me. It really shows that, you know, everyone, um, yeah, with your desire to awaken, mighty companions will be sent to you. It can be in any form. If you're working at a job, it could be there. Um, but yeah, they'll just be sent to you like these angels. I just thought of her as like some kind of angel, you know, like the TV series Touched by an Angel. It reminded me of that. <laughs> and so, yeah, and then I think after that day, she got fired or something. I never saw her again. So <laughs> that was that was really cool. But yeah, I feel like I just love all the miracles that come in because like I said before, they're really a convincing job to show you like the power of your mind. <laughs> I remember another time I was going to this meditation group and uh, for some reason I was always running a couple minutes late to that group. And this one day I was driving on the highway on, on my way to the group and I just had this thought like, okay, it looks like I'm going to be a few minutes late again. And, um, and then I just had this really expansive experience while I was on that highway of like my mind just being everywhere. And then I had this thought, well, if my mind is so powerful, I should have some kind of effect on time. You know, I kind of want to be on time. I wasn't really trying to make anything happen, but it was more of like a realization, wow, my mind's powerful. Um, I should have some kind of like effect on time. <laughs> and uh, what happened was I, I got to the meditation group and usually there's like five or six people in there at this point. Cause I was like five minutes late. You know, I expected there to be five, six people and they're all meditating and I'm kind of like coming in and like trying to like sneak over to my chair or something. It's kind of what I expected to happen. But I walk in there and no one's in there at all. Like not a single person. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And uh, I just sat down and meditated for like two minutes and I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on. So I walk outside. I run into one of the participants and she was like, oh, I was looking for our instructor, um, the facilitator of the group. And I was like, okay, sounds good. Maybe we can just start meditating uh, without him. And so we just start meditating. And then eventually the facilitator walks in and maybe a couple other people. And so at this point, it's cool because I actually technically was on time. You know, I was the first one there. Actually, I was the first one in the group. But not only that, it was really cool because the facilitator walks in and he's like, oh, sorry, I was late. Um, I got stuck in some kind of time warp. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and again, it was one of those experiences where it didn't hit me at first, but we started the meditation. And I was like, wait. And then I, all of a sudden, I remembered what I said in the car on the highway. And then I remembered what he just said. And I didn't even know what a time warp was. But then it kind of all started to hit me. And I had like an amazing meditation because I was in the miracle. And, and yeah, it's so beautiful. So yeah, I really think that's what's so powerful and amazing about all these miracles. They're really like convincing mind mm. that really everything we believe is, it's not as it actually is. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, there's just something that was coming to my mind just as I was having a prayer about our, our show today, just around kind of modern mystics and and just transparency and my companions. And, and I feel like, you know, every, it's like, it's so individualized, everyone's path of what it's going to look like. And it, I still felt like in my mind, it's, it's not like, I don't feel like at least anymore, it's not a path of like solitude. It's really a path of like mighty companions, relationship, like brotherhood. <laughs> and yeah, I just, I mean, I've heard different people saying like, oh, but I, you know, I don't live in a community, how to do this. And, and for me, actually, you know, Andy was my first, uh, my first mighty companion, like before I even really knew the term. And because I started, you know, I started the course, or I read Disappearance the Universe by Gary Renard, uh, going into my first year of, of college, because that summer before I it was like this big undoing for me, this dark night of the soul, where all these things just happened to just perfect timing like crumble me <laughs> where you know my pride was too high like oh i don't need help i'm okay like i'm an atheist science cosmos i'm good and then just <clears throat> with having with having these very humbling experiences and just kind of crumbling this pride i just opened up to this place of like okay i need help i need an, another way and i don't want to you know i didn't feel like it was my path to um you know, take drugs or things like that to suppress, you know, antidepressants, things like that. I felt like there's got to be a better way where I don't 
need anything. And that's where really I felt like the course came to me through Andy actually <laughs> this experience of the universe. And then uh so practicing that in my first year of, of of university and then especially my second year during that time I was about 14 hours away bus ride from Maryland, which is Maryland uh, East Coast where we grew up. I was in Quebec, Canada for my university uh for those two years that I went. And during that time, especially that second year, I think we were having at least one Skype call a day, if not like Skype chatting all the time, because I was just having all these insights and I just, I wanted to feel so joined with you, Andy. And so we were just connecting all the time for all these months, you know, 14 hours apart. It doesn't really matter at that point, but it was like technology. It's like, it's coming now, not by coincidence. It's like, it's coming now because the mind is ready to, to join, to connect, just like this Zoom technology right here, these joinings each Sunday or these online retreats that now we're doing, these monthly ones, you know, it's, it's no coincidence. <laughs> you're, you're, I forget how the quote goes exactly, but your place, your, you know, time, your, what? Passage. <laughs> your passage through time and space is not at random. Even having the tech support tell me that right now. <laughs> not at random. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like yeah it's if there's a desire to join like it'll show up like when I was finally ready even even with Andy there was a certain point where like the course got very deep for me after my six months immersion of it in university um yeah I was entering my second semester my second year and and that's when I had a long distance girlfriend at the time uh, who's in France and and it was right at that time, I, I remember around Christmas time, it was right around her birthday, and, and I was, you know, I was reading two pages of text every day, and, and one lesson, and, and I got to uh, chapter 16, uh, and the section, the illusion and the reality of love. I was like, oh, this looks interesting. <laughs> so I, I decided, I read it, and it, I was just, something about it so inspired me, and yet so crushed me, <laughs> just because I realized by reading that, I've been having this like illusion like I've had all these thoughts and fantasies oh I got this five-year plan I'll get married with her in five years I'll get rich in between and, you know all these thoughts you know me and Andy had this business plan it's, it's all I had all these friends <laughs> and <laughs> it's pretty funny now but <laughs> um yeah and so I was just reading through that and then it I, I felt like intuitively I heard but it was kind of den denying it but I knew quite soon after that we were going to break up and it wasn't, I think it was maybe two weeks later where all of a sudden I received this uh, Facebook chat saying like, we need to talk. And immediately I was like, Oh, not, th not those words. I know those words. And it was just the spacing of it, but it was perfect because for me in my spiritual path, I've come to see whether I like it or not in the moment, every time a relationship seems to end, it's always been this like catalyst for me because it's just, oh, okay, like, I can't rely on that anymore, and it just, like, dives me deeper into, like, I need you, God, like, <laughs> I need, you. like, I, you know, I know there's got to be a better way, and it's always been this helpful thing where it just, it gets used, and at that time for me, it was, yeah, I think it was, like, a few days after I had, like, a panic attack, which I hadn't had for a while, and I Skyped Andy at midnight, you know, so it doesn't even matter where you're, your mighty companions are it's like if it's given they'll be there and i skyped him and he basically just walked me through my panic attack at that time because i just i was spinning in my mind and it was like for three hours and i went to sleep with him like on my computer right there near my bed and he just walked me through and i was so grateful for it and i was like so touched by it and you know that was just showing me like we can trust the ones that are given to us like they'll be there like the ones we need and if they're, if they're not if for some reason and that, that means we're ready to, to face whatever it is in that moment. And it was at that time that then it just started really opening up. Uh, because I think two weeks later is I was watching, I'd heard about David. Again, Andy shared the first video with me. <laughs> it was like, he's been like this angel that keeps, like, was opening up doors for me. And uh, so David Hoffmeister, uh, yeah, I was watching videos of him. And at that time, it was just deepening. I kept watching him. And like Andy said, like almost eight hours a day at certain times. And, and I just hit this really deep place. Like, again, that relationship entered me into like uh, the ending of it. 
into this dark night of soul. And that's when I just happened to be guided to find David's email address. I don't even remember where I looked. I feel like it's so easy to like find locations now and um, all this information now. But at the time, my mind was kind of blurry. And that's when I decided to write this email with him, which was this real kind of transparent thing. I felt very vulnerable writing to someone I'd never met, but I felt this deep trust with. Um, and somehow I just felt like I had this deep prayer, like, I don't know if I can go another day, like with this despair I'm going through. Like, this is so deep. And I don't hear anyone else talking about, you know, through the darkness to the light, except this guy, David Hoffmeister. And I, so I just felt this trust with him. So I wrote this email to him saying I was in Quebec, Canada, college, all that. And, and I, I went to sleep just with this prayer, like, okay, reach me. You know, I need help here. I'm like really scared. And, and I, I woke up and I saw the first thing on my phone was an email reply from David. And I was astounded because first of all, I didn't even know if people would respond. You know, I had no experience of this. And just it was this loving message of like, I'm with you and there's mighty companions with you and all this. And that's what really opened me up from there. It's like Facebook groups came in, uh, prayer and support which I, I felt like I really needed at that time and just all these things. And then even the spiritual community and it just, it just opened up as my desire to, to deepen and to really go for God and to really allow myself to fall apart, you know, to come into a real experience of who I am, you know, as that became really more solid in my mind, it's just opened up and opened up and opened up. So I just, yeah, there's something just that felt really, talking about my companions and being willing to be transparent like andy and i have on our calls like yeah, yeah. <laughs> no examples are coming to me but that's just how our calls have felt lately just even this deeper level of, that we weren't even ready for at the beginning you know i remember like holding back certain thoughts like <laughs> yeah, yeah like yeah. all the all the mighty companions we have they are our relationships. So when we say relationships, it's, it doesn't have to be like girlfriend, boyfriend kind of thing. And uh, we only have a few minutes left. So I just wanted to share a little bit about relationships because we're actually having an online retreat about relationships with David Hoffmeister, which Nicholas has been talking a lot about, which probably all of you know, and um, so, some of his other mystic friends and elders. And um, it's going to be next, uh, actually this Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this Friday. No. Six April 6th to 8th <laughs> retreat on relationships. So yeah, just a little about relationships. I just know for me, like I also had a relationship at the time during high school that went on for like a year or two. And I really thought like that relationship was an end for me, you know, like that is love and that's it. Like that's the end. And then I think at some point while I was practicing the course and before I went to my first retreat, I had this realization that actually I don't know what love is. Like I just had that realization one day. And then what happened was I was really giving my full yes to the Holy Spirit and being guided to all these different places at the time, but really with that in mind that I didn't know what love was. And so I went to my first retreat, which was a silent retreat at the Living Miracles Monastery. And I really wanted to give it everything I got. And it was like a six day silent retreat. And having that in mind, not knowing what love is, I remember it was like two or three days into the silent retreat, all this darkness felt like it was building up in my mind and I had like this huge headache and um, we were having this healing touch session that night where I really didn't want to go because I was like, oh, healing touch, I don't, I don't really, I'm not really into that. But I, I really felt the guidance to go there. So I actually went and what happened was I just, you sit in the chair and someone is seemingly giving you love and you're receiving love from them and then you switch places with the group and so my eyes were closed and I, the whole time I was in deep prayer like please Holy Spirit like help me with release this darkness in my mind help me release this darkness and I just prayed 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 so hard and the person behind me was just so passionate with like uh, this shoulder massage or whatever was happening and then the music was uh you can relax now you can relax now like everything's okay by Shane and Noel and uh, all of a sudden I just felt like I felt like this release and I saw this vision and it was like, it was me as the son of God in heaven. And I was just lying down and my eyes were closed and God was just whispering in my ear, like you can relax now. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I felt, I felt, I started crying so much and the huge release from my forehead and 
the headache went away, the, the seeming sickness that was coming went away, everything went away, and I just felt something that was so indescribable that I had no idea what it was, but I felt the happiest I had ever felt in my entire life. And I remember I stood up and I shared to the whole group, I was like, wow, my entire life until this moment, I feel like I've been dead until now, until this moment. And I felt alive for the first time in my entire life. And I felt like I had been a zombie up until that moment. And that was probably the only, <laughs> that experience was the only thing I could say was, came close to what love is. That just felt like I got a glimpse of it that day. So I just wanted to share that. Really, we don't even know what love is. Like, we actually don't know anything, really. And yeah. <laughs> I was having the same thought last night and this morning, so I join you. So, so yeah, we really have to wrap it up now, but <laughs> in three weeks, yeah, in three weeks on Sunday, we have a Facebook event page, Modern Mystics, search it up, and thank you guys so much for joining us today, and I love all of you, and thank you, Nicholas. Oh. I love you, too. I love you, Andy. I love you all. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Nicholas, and thanks, Andy. Yeah, I thought it was just really beautiful what you were talking about. Like, when there's that call in the heart to connect, it has to be met. And I think we've all had, like, real miracle experiences with that, too. I know for myself, when I was just starting the course, <clears throat> it came to a time where I knew I had to go deeper and I needed help. And just by, I remember I went online and I just typed in, you know, A Course in Miracles Sydney. And that was like, the, I found the very first Facebook, uh, very first meetup group that Francis Zhu had created. And we came together then and we've been together ever since. Seemingly that was like more than, that was like eight years ago, 10 years ago, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, I just, I just feel that like the, the call of the heart is always answered and it doesn't really matter what the form looks like because the miracle will lead the way. And that we do have so many great ways that we can connect as well. I think we were talking about like, we have the online retreat coming up. We've also had like the ongoing like 30 day programs um, Unwind Your Mind 30-day program where people have been coming together and meeting through Facebook and, and uh, mystical mind training where people have been going deeper with mind training partners. So I just know there's so many great tools to go deeper and with the internet now, we are never limited. <laughs> Yeah, there's just a, a tremendous amount of ways to stay connected, actually. And that's part of what we feel inspired to share during these interludes here, the 15 minutes or so between one show and the next. And of course, you're going to hear about all the upcoming events and things just very naturally because we're all so involved and inspired by them. So um, yeah, that's just something that, that we feel inspired to share with you. You'll see links in your chat and you'll you'll hear about the different things that we have to offer. And, and really, they're just fantastic ways to take you deeper and to to um, help you be connected from wherever you are. So Peter mentioned the 30-day program. That's a monthly program that we run, and um, it's free. And it, it's a daily email to your inbox, and um, there's movie recommendations. In fact, there's um, like a movie of the week, which in this moment where we're doing some uh, movie gatherings, actually, like online with Jeff. Maybe you've seen those or been a part of them. And they're just really deep messages to really help you sink in and, and again, get in touch with something a little more deeply in your daily life to feel connected. And, um, and Peter also mentioned MMT, our mystical mind training, and that is a fantastic program. It's um, a two-year program, actually, and you're usually assigned a mind training partner so that you can really um, go deeper with someone. And there's a number of different modules. You're learn you'll learn about things like guidance in a really in-depth way, um, holy relationship. Uh, trust and inspiration, sickness. There's a, um, even uh, something new coming through for sickness. It's and full of media as well, like full of recommended movies, music, um, everything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's actually like attending a virtual retreat. So um, you've got your music clips and teachings and movie. Yeah, it, there's, it's just fantastic. I recommend it. Check it out. And um, that's mysticalmindtraining.com.org. Dot org, mysticalmindtraining.org. It's going to be in your chat window in a moment. And we, yeah, as we were saying, we have that um, our next virtual retreat coming up two weeks' time? Or I think one? it's two weeks' time. It's April 6th through the 8th, and it's the focus is on using relationships for awakening, which is just as you're hearing Andy and Nicholas share, and of course, probably as you already know, you're in relationship with everything, actually. So 
whether you're you seem to be in a committed partnership you know like in the the, tr the way that the world traditionally thinks of it like in a romantic commitment there's um you know just really no end to what this the ways that this can enrich your life yeah and help you unwind it's the same too as like for those who haven't been to an online retreat before we use zoom just like we're using today and um you know, everyone has an opportunity to share what's on their heart as well it's a beautiful experience so like there's you know you can talk you know share with david when david's is david on the next retreat he is on the next retreat so yeah beautiful opportunities to share what's on your heart and to go deeper it feels just like a, a real retreat being in person so yeah. except that you don't have to leave your home and you can join in your pajamas with a cup of coffee That's so <laughs> we invite you from wherever you are and um yeah just we we feel so inspired to extend all of this and to share about all the ways to connect because we we just want to feel connected to you as well so we just really invite you in as deeply as you're you're wanting to come whether it's a virtual retreat or um mmt for two years like really there's something available for anything that you're feeling okay so with that <laughs> we'll mention our next show coming up so we're going to have a divine intervention with uh, ken and anna and it's going to be in 10 minutes time <laughs> Welcome to Divine Intervention. Bienvenidos todos a Intervención Divina. <laughs> I'm here with Ken. And I'm here with Anna. Estoy aquí con Ken. <laughs> Yo me llamo Anna. And yes, today we would like to speak that about you don't have to stay in the pain and you can always go to a miracle. Yo me, me gustaría hablar que no tienes que permanecer en el dolor, no tienes que permanecer en la culpa ni nada, sino siempre del otro lado está el milagro. And this is our inspiration for this show. Esta es nuestra inspiración para este show. Just, we are just hunting for miracles. <laughs> Solo estamos en esta cacería por el milagro que siempre está detrás de este dolor. So I would like to start reading one little section from the course. Me gustaría empezar leyendo una pequeña sección del curso. Which is lesson 78. And yeah, yeah, go, go start. Let miracles replace all grievances. Que los milagros reemplacen todos mis resentimientos. Perhaps it is not yet quite clear to you that each decision you make is one between a grievance and a miracle. Tal vez aún no estés completamente claro para ti el hecho de que en cada decisión que tomas estás eligiendo entre un resentimiento y un milagro. Each grievance stands like a dark shield of hate before the miracle it would conceal. Cada resentimiento se alza cual tenebroso escudo de odio ante el milagro que pretende ocultar. And as you raise it up before your eyes, you will not see the miracle beyond. Y al alzarlo ante tus ojos, no puedes, no puedes ver el milagro que se encuentra tras él. Yet all the while it waits for you in light, but you behold your grievance instead. Este no obstante sigue ahí aguardándote en la luz, pero en lugar de él contemplas tus resentimientos. Today we go beyond all grievances. To look upon the miracle instead. Hoy vamos a ir más allá de los resentimientos para contemplar el milagro en lugar de ellos. We will reserve the way you see by not allowing sight to stop before it sees. Invertiremos la manera como ves al no dejar que tu vista se detenga antes de que veas. We will not wait before the shield of hate but lay it down and gently lift our eyes in silence to behold the Son of God. No esperaremos frente al escudo de odio, sino que lo dejaremos caer. Y suavemente alzaremos los ojos en silencio para contemplar al Hijo de Dios. He waits for you behind your grievances, and as you lay them down, he will appear in shining light where each one stood before. Él te espera tras todos sus resentimientos, y a medida que dejas estos de lado, Él aparecerá radiante de luz en, lugar, en el lugar que antes ocupaba cada uno de ellos. 
for every grievance is a block to sight and as it lifts you as it lifts you see the son of god where he has always been pues cada resentimiento constituye un obstáculo a la visión mas según se elimina puedes ver al hijo de dios ahí donde él siempre ha estado he stands in light but you were in the dark él se encuentra en la luz pero tú estabas en las tinieblas Each grievance made the darkness deeper and you could not see. Cada resentimiento hacía que las tinieblas fueran aún más tenebrosas, lo cual te impedía ver. And I just feel passionate about this. <laughs> Solo me siento apasionada acerca de esto porque detrás de todo este dolor siempre está esta alegría, siempre está Dios ahí esperándonos. Behind all this pain, it's always this light shining there for us, just waiting for us. Like, we don't have to stay in that. And we just want to do like an, show you like an example, the way you can apply this in your life. Solo queremos mostrarte una manera en que puedes vivir esto en tu vida. Y esta semana, Ken tiene un milagro que compartir. Y vamos a llevarte a través del proceso. And this week, Ken has a miracle to share. And we just have to go through that process. Like, this is alive. So this week, I began with a grievance. Así que esta semana empecé con un resentimiento. I'd, have a, I'd had a conversation with a friend. Tenía, tuve una conversación con una amiga. And we both got two different things out of the conversation. Y las dos sacamos diferentes cosas de la conversación. I believe that we'd been discussing, so basically it was for me to take over a new area. It was a social media area, and we were discussing as to whether I would take it over or not. Estábamos viendo si yo iba a tomar una nueva área, que es de redes sociales, o si no, estábamos en esta, en esta plática. So in my view of how the conversation went, we left it open. En mi punto de vista, la manera en que ocurrió es que esto se quedó como una puerta abierta. However, my friend took it as if I was taking on the area. Sin embargo, mi amiga me entendió que yo había dicho que sí a esta área. And so everybody presumed that I was taking on the area. Así que todos asumieron que yo estaba tomando esta área. So we had a meeting. Así que tuvimos una reunión. In the morning. En la mañana. And it was shared. I'm going to be taking over the social media hour. <laughs> y se compartió. Voy a estar tomando ahora el, el área de, de redes sociales. Which I believed I hadn't agreed with. Que yo creía que no había aceptado. Which made me very angry. <laughs> que me hizo sentir muy enojado. So I strongly said that is not what I said. Así que yo dije, eso no fue lo que yo dije. And of course my friend said, oh, I thought you did. Y mi amiga dijo, oh, yo pensé que había dicho que sí. And so I stood my position, no, that was not what we agreed. Y yo me quedé en mi posición, no, eso no fue lo que acordamos. So we decided that after the meeting we would go and talk together. Así que después de la reunión acordamos ir a hablar juntos de esto. But by this point I was very, very angry. Pero para este punto estaba ya muy enojado. And I was not wanting to see the miracle. Y no quería ver el milagro. I was wanting to be right. Quería tener la razón. So we started our discussion. Así que empezamos nuestra discusión. And I think, like, for me, it was like, um, no, this wasn't discussed. Para mí era, no, no discutimos esto. You're trying to manipulate me to do something that I don't want to do. Estás tratando de manipularme para hacer algo que no quiero hacer. You haven't respected me by coming to me in the first place and talking with me. No me has <clears throat> respetado para ven venir a hablar conmigo primero y después. And so now my mind is saying, actually, even if I do want to do it, I'm just going to be stubborn and say, no, I'm not doing it just to hold my ground, believing that I'm being controlled. <laughs> Así que... <laughs> Yo estaba en esta posición donde quería mantener mi punto de vista. Incluso si me gustaría tomar esta área, voy a mantenerme aquí con mi orgullo y voy a mantener mi posición. But soon it became clear that actually it wasn't anything personal. Pero muy rápidamente me di cuenta que no era algo personal. Um, that it was about the healing. 
que era acerca de la sanación. And so we decided to call in another friend. Así que decidimos llamar a este otro amigo. So the three of us could discuss it together. Para que los tres pudiéramos hablar juntos. And so I'm walking down there and I'm thinking, right, I'm going to stay in my position. Así que estoy caminando hacia ahí y dije, bueno, yo me voy a mantener en mi posición. And one of the first things that I heard was, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Y una de las primeras cosas que escuché fue, no tienes que hacer nada que no quieras hacer. I had misinterpreted that it was a demand on me. Había malinterpretado que era algo que se me estaba demandando a mí. And seemingly we could get into this interpersonal thing that we could both argue that I was right and that she was right. We could argue either way. Podíamos quedarnos en esta discusión de que ella tenía la razón o yo tenía la razón. However, that would have got us nowhere. Pero sin embargo, esto no nos va a llevar a nada. So our friend said, okay, so how do we move on from this point? What's now? Así que nuestro amigo dijo, bueno, ¿cómo podemos seguir adelante con esto? How do you feel about taking on the area? ¿Cómo te sientes eh, al tomar esta área? And I wasn't feeling good inside of myself. And I was saying, look, I don't want to be letting anybody down. This is the real, the, the truth. I don't feel that I'm capable of doing this right now. Y yo sentía que no quería decepcionar a nadie. Eh, no me sentía capaz para hacerlo. So then it was put, what about if this was a gift for you? Y luego se me dijo, ¿y qué tal si hay un regalo para ti en esto? So I started to say, yeah, that is actually a possibility that there could be um, a gift in this. Así que eso fue la, la resolución. ¿Qué tal si realmente hay un regalo en esto? So again, it was just a, um, an exploration to see, okay, is this really the Spirit's plan? Either way, there was no investment in which way it went. De nuevo, fue regresar a esto. Esto tiene que ver con el plan del Espíritu, sin importar a qué lugar nos fuéramos. So my vision began to change and I started to see that actually I was being supported in the decision that we were going to make together. Y mi visión empezó a cambiar y me di cuenta que qué tal si yo tengo también apoyo en esta solución. So I began to soften. Así que me empecé a suavizar. And I've been praying y había estado orando that often I believe that I'm right. Que muchas veces yo creo que tengo la razón. But maybe I was wrong. Pero tal vez <laughs> estaba, estaba en lo equivocado. Just maybe I was wrong about this whole situation. Solamente tal vez estaba equivocado acerca de toda esta situación. And if I am wrong, if I'm, if I'm wanting to be right, I'm going to miss the healing. Y si yo me mantengo en la posición de tener la razón, me voy a perder de la sanación. So, it was offered, okay, what, what, what's, the, what's your fear? Así que fue ofrecido, bueno, ¿cuál es tu miedo? So then I started to look at, okay, this is a little bit more deeper than I, than I thought. My anger was to suppress the, the fears and the belief, the deep belief was not good enough. Así que empecé a, a ver, bueno, aquí realmente hay algo más profundo. Eh, y con eso me dije a mí mismo, bueno, ¿qué es realmente la creencia que está ahí detrás? No soy suficientemente bueno. And that I'm probably dyslexic. Y que probablemente soy disléxico. And so I would be shown to be being stupid because I was asked, I would be asked to be doing more writing and things. Y que iba a ser probado que yo era tonto porque se me iba a pedir hacer más escritura y este tipo de cosas. Which I felt very uncomfortable in doing. En lo cual yo me sentía muy eh, incómodo haciendo. So my ego actually in the background was saying, you're going to make loads of mistakes and you're going to look stupid and you're going to look like an idiot. Así que mi ego detrás de, de mi mente estaba diciendo, vas a cometer un montón de errores, vas a verte como tonto. So the best thing to do is to get angry and push the whole thing away. Así que la cosa era quedarse enojado y empujar todo afuera. However, once I started to see that and I had some emotion around it and letting that go, y sin embargo, mientras empecé a ver y esta emoción subió y la empecé a dejar ir, I started to remember that for two weeks now, Jesus had been talking to me and saying, why don't you start doing some more writing? 
me recordé que la, por las últimas dos semanas había estado orando y Jesús me había estado diciendo, ¿por qué no haces más escritura? Now I like writing in my diary because no one sees it and if I make mistakes then it feels safe. Me gusta escribir en mi diario porque si lo escribo y cometo errores ahí nadie más lo lee. So I was doing more than I would normally do and I was really enjoying it. Estaba haciendo más de lo que creía y realmente lo estaba disfrutando. And I'd also been given a little job to write a few descriptions. Y, tam week. y también esa semana se me dio un pequeño trabajo de escribir unas pequeñas descripciones. Which brought up a lot of fear. Que trajo un montón de miedo. And it took me half a day to write three paragraphs. Y me tomó medio día escribir tres párrafos. So this was confirming to me that I would be too slow to do the job that was being asked of me. Así que esto estaba confirmando que iba a ser demasiado lento para completar este trabajo. I won't be able to keep up. No voy a poder mantener el ritmo. Showing that I was stupid. Mostrando que era tonto. So the ego did not want to go in this direction. Así que el ego no quería ir en esta dirección. And I feared the feedback that I would get from my writing. Y temía el, los comentarios que iba a recibir de la escritura. However, when I handed in the descriptions, Sin embargo, cuando entregué estas descripciones, I got nothing but praise. No me dijeron nada más que estaba muy bien. They said, wow, this is really good. Y dije, wow, esto está muy bien. But I couldn't believe it inside. Pero no lo podía creer dentro de mí. My ego was saying, they're only saying that just to please you. Mi ego está diciendo, solo están diciendo eso para hacerte sentir bien. So going back to the three of us in the meeting, I'm remember that, remembering all this in my mind, that Jesus has just been gently saying, listen, like this is a really good area for you to go in because you've got this big block there. It seems like a big block and I'm just going to gently help you with it. You went fast. Pardon? You went too fast. Okay. I've got a little block. And Jesus is going to help me with it. <laughs> Se emocionó un poco, pero está diciendo que regresando a la reunión con las otras dos personas, con los otros dos amigos, él empezó a darse cuenta que Jesús está guiándolo gentilmente a esto. So I started to remember that in actual fact, this gift of taking over social media was exactly what I'd asked for. Y me empecé a dar cuenta que tomar esta área de redes sociales era exactamente lo que yo había pedido. And here was the gift in breaking free of something that I believed about myself. Y aquí estaba el regalo de liberarme de algo que yo creía acerca de mí mismo. And of course, it's got nothing to do with writing or the project or anything. Y claro, no tiene nada que ver con escribir eh, o nada que ver con el proyecto. But it's just about being used as a channel for the Holy Spirit. Pero es solo eh, para ser usado como un canal por el Espíritu Santo. And so he knew that I had a block there. Así que él sabía que yo tenía un bloqueo ahí. And I spoke to him and I said, well, how am I, how am I going to do this writing because I'm not clever enough? Y le dije, ¿cómo es que voy a hacer esta escritura? Yo no soy suficientemente inteligente. He said, well, the whole point is you don't have to do it because I'm going to do it all for you. Y, el, y todo el punto de esto es que no tienes que hacerlo tú. Yo lo voy a hacer por ti. So you don't have to worry así about que, anything. Así que no te tienes que preocupar por nada. So it's like all the pressure just started going away. Así que toda la presión se empezó a ir. That it's just simply personal beliefs that I believed about myself that were getting in the way from being truly used. Así que solo eran estos, estos creencias personales que me estaban manteniendo atrapado y no podía ser quien yo realmente soy. So then I could start to see the actual fact the anger was stopping me from getting in touch with all of this that was underneath. Así que he estado usando el enojo para Mantenerme atrapado y no poder ver todo lo que estaba debajo. And what I could see, it was like I was watching the TV program of myself, whereby I'd acted out this behavior. Um, y, y podía ver, que era como un programa de televisión, podía ver cómo se actuaba fuera este comportamiento. To stop me from being used. Para pararme de ser usado. In a deeper way. De una manera mucho más profunda. So it just became absolutely hilarious to me that I was doing this to stop actually the love that was wanting to be given to me. Y se, se fue algo muy divertido darme cuenta que en realidad solo estaba deteniendo este, todo este amor que viniera hacia mí. So after all of this, así que después de todo esto, I was asked again, do you feel, do you feel you want to take on the area? Se me preguntó otra vez, 
¿Sientes que quieres tomar esta área? And now, in half an hour, it's now turned from a no to a big yes. <laughs> y luego, en media hora, fue de un no a un gran sí. I had to swallow my pride. Me tragué el orgullo. <laughs> to receive the love. To receive the love, yeah, to receive the gift that was there. Para recibir este amor y recibir este regalo que estaba ahí. <laughs> And once I said that, I could really feel the joy coming in that I was truly being supported. Y luego de decir sí, empecé a ver toda esta alegría que estaba viniendo, de que realmente estaba siendo apoyado. That everything had come in actually so gently for me. Que todo había estado viniendo de una forma tan gentil para mí. But yet my ego mind wanted to catastrophize each stage, making it a terror in my mind. Pero mi mente del ego quería hacer toda una catástrofe. However, now when I sit back, I can feel the gift of the gentleness. Sin embargo, ahora que veo hacia atrás, veo el regalo de lo gentil que fue. That I'm not being pushed into something that I can't handle. Que no estoy siendo empujado hacia algo que yo no puedo manejar. That I can truly let go of. Que realmente lo puedo dejar ir. So once I said a full yes. En el momento en que dije este sí completo. All these ideas started to come to me about the area. Todas estas ideas empezaron a venir acerca de esta área. And how we wanted to be much more creative. Y cómo queríamos ser más y más creativos. And that's been something that really inspires me. Y eso es algo que realmente me inspira. And maybe I could be creative in writing too. Y también podía ser creativo en la escritura. So once I gave the yes, it was like everybody came in to support. Y cuando dije el, el sí, todo mundo regresó aquí a apoyarme. Often my ego tells me, you've got to do this on your own and get through it. Muchas veces el ego nos dice, me dice, tienes que atravesar esto y hacerlo solo. However, all my friends said, we're right behind you and we want to support you in this. Sin embargo, todos mis amigos me dijeron, estamos aquí para ti, te vamos a apoyar en esto. And that in some respects is the beautiful thing about being in community. Y esto es una de las cosas que son hermosas acerca de vivir en la comunidad. Because you don't have to be amazing at everything. Because what? You don't have to be amazing at everything. <laughs> no, tienes que, <laughs> no tienes que tratar de hacerlo todo tú. That there's always this support coming in. Que siempre está el apoyo ahí para ti. To show you who you are. Para enseñarte quién eres. And so, since that time, Así que desde ese momento, we've all really enjoyed the social media hour together. Hemos realmente disfrutado esta hora de, de redes sociales. And we've been having a lot of fun. Y hemos tenido un montón de, de alegría y diversión. And also, Anne, y también Anne, said to me, she said, did you know there's a program that um, you can put into your computer? What's it called? Grammarly, is it? Oh. Grammarly. And it actually... Um, notices when you're all your spelling and everything. Sí. Vino mi amiga Anne y me dijo, ¿sabes de un programa que hay para la computadora que te ayuda con la gramática y la ortografía? Se llama Grammarly. Aquí está. And it actually teaches you how to do it. Y en realidad te enseña cómo hacerlo. Which I really enjoyed. Que realmente lo disfruté. <laughs> and it's really beautiful that when with that, yes, Like really everything, mm. even those tiny details yeah. of the grammar, you didn't believe you could write. Yeah. And okay, okay, here it is, my love. <laughs> This program will help you keep in that confidence. Mm. Y es realmente hermoso ver cuando uno dice ese sí, como la, todas las cosas pequeñas empiezan a apoyarte. Incluso este programa que era para escritura, para ortografía, vino y empieza a apoyar diciendo, aquí está mi amor. Te estoy cuidando. <laughs> yeah, so it's just remembering that all that support's always there. Y es solo recordar que todo este apoyo siempre está ahí. Even though it felt like this was something that I wouldn't possibly be able to do. Incluso cuando pienso que esto no era algo que podría haber hecho. But the possibilities are endless. Pero las posibilidades son sin límite. When you truly want to stay with the Spirit and learn what He's got as the lesson. Cuando realmente you. quieres permanecer con el Espíritu y ver la lección que tiene para ti. Yes, I feel very grateful. Sí, así que me siento muy agradecido. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's always about the gift that's behind. 
siempre es acerca de este regalo que está atrás. And that's our daily practice. Esa es nuestra práctica diaria. Every situation that happens for us is not by chance. Todo lo que nos pasa no es solo porque sí. Everything is being planned for that so that we can see the gift behind it. Todo está siendo planeado así para que podamos ver el regalo que está detrás. And we will always find that gift if we're willing to be wrong. Y siempre vamos a tener la razón. De, siempre vamos a poder ver ese regalo si estamos dispuestos a estar equivocados acerca de esto. Yeah, I think that's been one of my prayers to really, really be wrong. Siento que esa ha sido una de mis oraciones. Realmente sentir que puedo estar equivocado. Because then I can open up to something much greater than me. Porque ahí me puedo abrir algo mucho más grande que yo. And I mean in this situation, had I just stayed in that position, I en, wouldn't have had the healing. Y en esta situación, si yo me hubiera quedado en esa posición, no hubiera podido eh, recibir esta sanación. But to continue just to be brave enough just to swallow the pride and open up to something new. Pero solo seguir en esto, tragarme el orgullo y abrirme a esto nuevo. Is actually a real gift. <laughs> es realmente el gran regalo. <laughs> but it can feel like I've, like the, the personal self or the self concept just, oh, just doesn't like that, being wrong. Pero se puede sentir como, como que el ser, el concepto de uno mismo está así como, oh, no quiero no quiero no tener la razón. But the course is always teach me just let me show you how to perceive this situation. Pero el curso siempre nos está enseñando, déjame enseñarte cómo cómo puedes percibir esto. Yeah, to continue to trust that I actually don't know my own best interests. Seguir confiando en que en realidad no sé lo que es mejor para mí. And I think that's something like really deep for me when you really think about that. Like, I do not know my own best interests. Siento que eso es algo muy, muy profundo. Realmente cuando lo piensas, yo no sé qué es lo mejor para mí. It's, it's quite a put down for the ego. Es algo que apacha el ego. However, there's something being offered greater than that. Sin embargo, algo mucho más grande está siendo ofrecido. That I just don't see. Que yo no puedo ver. So that's what feels exciting. Y eso es lo que se siente emocionante. To see what's on the other side. Ver qué es lo que está del otro lado. Mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can even practice this at home with everything. Puedes practicar todo esto en casa, con todo lo que pase. Eh, tenemos ahorita uh, una herramienta maravillosa que te puede ayudar a atravesar todo esto y se llama Speedy. We have this beautiful gift, this tool that can help you go through it, and it's called Speedy. Y ahorita tenemos ya Speedy en español. Todo fue traducido. Entonces, en ese momento en que viene esta molestia, tú solo la llevas a Speedy y te ayuda a ver el regalo que está detrás de esto. Yeah, and if you haven't used it, it's a beautiful tool to get in touch with the beliefs. Y si no lo has usado, es una herramienta maravillosa para ponerte en contacto con las creencias. And as you can see, what happened for me is like my emotions on top were the superficial. Y como puedes ver, las emociones eran la parte superficial. But yeah, I had these beliefs that were actually fueling me. Pero tenía todas estas creencias que estaban avivando toda esta situación. And so Spirit actually helps to get to, okay, what is the real core issue here? Así que Spirit te ayuda a regresar a qué es la creencia que está realmente ahí debajo. So you can actually let that go. Para que lo puedas dejar ir. <laughs> Because like for my situation, when I started off just being angry. Porque en esta situación donde solo empecé sintiéndome enojado. I had no idea that in actual fact what was fueling it all was that I believed that I was stupid. No me di cuenta que realmente lo que estaba haciendo toda esta situación es que yo creía que era tonto. So that's the beauty of these tools that there's so much unconscious that we're just not aware of that is actually creating me to behave in the way that I am. Así que esta es la hermosura de estas herramientas que hay tantas cosas en el inconsciente que están haciendo que yo actúe de cierta manera. It needs to be let go of. Y se necesita dejar ir. 
So it's also in Spanish, Spirit, isn't it, um, Anna? Sí, también está en español. Lo pueden buscar en Facebook como Spirit, tu asistente espiritual. You can find it in Spirit, your spiritual assistant, in English, in Facebook too. <laughs> and yeah, I think, I think we're almost done in time. So thank you, thank you so much for this. Mm. Thank you muchas, for joining muchas us. gracias por haber estado aquí con nosotros. Ya llegó el tiempo de decir adiós. <laughs> gracias por este show de intervención divina. Que podamos seguir viviendo esa intervención divina en nuestras vidas. <laughs> so we can continue to see this divine intervention in our lives. <laughs> no, he's going to book up, look. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Ken and Anna. Yeah, it's such a great topic, actually, just talking about these um, mind tools and actually how to you know, work with upsets that are, that are coming up in the day. And they did mention uh, Spiri, which is one of our latest mind tools. But I did also want to talk about, too, because Spiri was based on uh, the levels of mind which is a, a tool David Hofmeister came up with um, some years ago. And uh, you can find uh, the levels of mind as a tool you can work with. I think it's through the book, Awakening Through A Course in Miracles, you'll find the diagram there. And there's also a website for it now too, levelsofmind.com. But basically, it's just a great tool to start to train the mind in a different way of thinking, like from being habitually kind of judgmental or like reacting to things to actually giving yourself the opportunity to stop and to like approach it in a different way. Um, and the levels of mind basically is a, it's a visual diagram, like a series of concentric circles. And uh, you may, may have seen it, but on the outside, it works with your perceptions. And then it starts to work with you, like going within the mind, going from perception to emotion, thoughts, beliefs, and then to the desire where you can actually change your mind about what it is that you're, you're um, perceiving by changing your mind at the core. So I just wanted to mention that tool too, but we have the levels of mind there. Um, also the instrument for peace is another variation on that same website I mentioned. Yeah, that's a fantastic tool. You can even find them paired, the levels of mind diagram along with the instrument for peace. And it's amazing. We actually have Laverne coming up next with her show, Free Your Mind, to actually take you more deeply into these mind tools because they're, they're so, so practical and so helpful and like, with Spiri, for example, it's like, it's right in your pocket, you know, the course tells us that the uh, one right use of judgment is how do I feel? And so there's an opportunity really in every moment to be checking in. And when you start to feel that, like, whether it's very, very small or very large, the course also tells us there's no small upsets. And so these tools are intensely valuable. And, um, yeah, the instrument for peace is just uh, very similar to the levels of mind in that you can start with like a very basic, I feel angry because da, da 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 And then it just takes you down and down and down. And it's, um, like, it's just so helpful. Like it, it's a guide actually down deeper into your mind to help you release these contractions. I was going to so, say too, like about that, like the great thing with it is too, like you start with these tools, but then it becomes like habitual for yourself, like learning how to go within that you don't even need the tools in the end. And it can be so quick. You can have like a, a judgment come up in your mind or you can feel angry and suddenly you remember, oh, that process, how do I feel? Like, oh, what am I perceiving? How do I feel? And just in a matter of seconds, sometimes you'll trace it down into something that's like a common belief for you and you can very easily recognize and let it go. So that's the exciting part is that you can be so quick and you start to learn these tools and it passes, like carries over to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got our Levels of Mind, an instrument for peace, and Spiri, of course, which is just exploding, um, both in English and Spanish. There's an expansion into and some interest in other languages as well. So, yeah, really um, do check it out and, and stay tuned, actually, to hear more Laverne speak about it more. And um, I was going to just share with you all of our Spanish resources, but I feel like that's probably enough now. Basically, we've got lots of Spanish resources, too, and... Um, Stay tuned probably towards the end of the show. If there's a little bit of time, we can share some more about that. Right. And we're back. <laughs> what a way to ease back in. <laughs> so, yeah, we are back. And now we are going to join Laverne for Free Your Mind.
pretty excited to be part of the lineup this morning and uh, just feeling a lot of gratitude um, for this opportunity to talk about and share about um, these mind tools, these amazing mind tools that, um, that Living Miracles has available for, for all of us to use. And, and for me, it's really about being able to, to extend this incredible gift that I've received from using the tools, getting to work with the tools, extending the tools, growing the tools. I mean, it seems like it's just like a, a never ending gift that just keeps on giving. And um, I really wanted to use this very first show just to talk about what I envision for um, Free Your Mind and uh, a little bit about my journey, uh, a little bit about the tools, and then um, really about the whole purpose of this show and the way that I would love to see it unfold um, uh, every other week that um, Free Your Mind is uh, going to be aired. So yeah, just a little bit about my journey and, and how um, the, the mind tools came into my awareness. Um, I feel like just in my spiritual journey that I, it's always been a, que a how question, like how is healing, how does healing happen? happen? And one of the first things that it, where it came into my awareness is that I, um, I was born with a, a heart murmur. Uh, in, uh, yeah, it was like a, my heart would beat irregularly and sometimes it would even stop, you know, and I would lose breath and, Kind of just go into sort of this a freeze mode, and um, in my in my thirties, um, there was a medicine man on the reservation that I grew up on in Fort in Idaho, and he did this like ceremony and did this work on me, and it was like amazingly it went away, and I I've never had it since, but it was kind of like started uh, in my mind just this questioning of you know, how did that happen? <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. I was told I would never, ever, that would never go away. And so that was really the beginning of my journey and in, in, into healing, actually, and um, witnessing several kind of miraculous healings with the medicine man and, and then um, my own journey uh, going into like alternative healing. I really was into energy work and polarity therapy and theta healing and crystal therapy. It's kind of all these different things, but really what I could see and just using all these different modalities, it was like, it was more like a hit and miss situation. Sometimes it would work and it was fabulous. And other times on other people, it wouldn't work. So it was kind of like, huh, that doesn't really, if it was truly healing, it would seem like it would be lasting in my mind. And and so when I got a hold of the Course of Miracles and I saw that line in the Course where um, Jesus says, you know, all healing, lasting healing is healing of the mind, that really sort of stopped me in my tracks. Like, wow, I just, um, yeah, I was kind of like, wow, all of these things that I tried and, you know, no wonder that um, it wasn't working. So that that really was an eye opener for me and and really uh, back in 2007 when i when i read that in the course like it really shifted things around um in my mind and and i really feel like just my the life of laverne i seem to really build a strong case for being a victim and and growing up as a native american my mom's native american my dad is white kind of had this like pretty convincing scenario of being a victim like seemed like you know the indians in america had gotten screwed their land was stolen we were always like seeming to be like on the short end of the stick and not having jobs high poverty alcoholism drugs and kind of all of this stuff going on in the reservation so you know i was kind of even playing that out on a community level where i was working for my tribe and um really trying to advocate for for Native American rights, both at the national level and at the state level, and also through journalism, because I have a background as a as a, a newspaper reporter too. So, it was kind of within all of this this backdrop that I I 
started diving into the course and studying the course. And in Idaho at the time, there I really wasn't able to find many other people that were studying the course, but I did find out about um, a retreat center in Utah, um, about three, mo three hours away from uh, where I grew up in the area that I grew up in. And so I started just traveling there um, occasionally and joining with some people there who were studying the course. And, and that retreat center happened to be um, uh, owned at the time by Suzanne Sullivan, who is now an elder with, uh, with Living Miracles. And, and it was a couple of years later that she invited David Hoffmeister um, and, um, and I met David and I really felt like what he was talking about uh, and how he was able to, to really um, describe the, the practical application of the course really resonated with me. And, and even then I can just see that a lot of my questions to him were how questions like, okay, that sounds really great that this, you know, that it's all about our beliefs in our mind that we're generating everything that we're seeing in this perceptual world was like, okay, well, that's great. But how do you get these, you know, how do you get the, these, what you're seeing out on the screen back into the mind? So, so that was really the introduction to me of, uh, of the instrument for peace, actually. And, and I had um, purchased a copy of Awakening Through A Course in Miracles. And in the back of the book, there's actually a form um, that is, a, you just fill it out and it's the instrument for peace. And, uh, but the thing about it is, it was like, okay, I used it once. Now I got to erase everything and use it again. So it was kind of like this, you know, it seemed like uh, I would have to make copies of it or, you know, try to be able to use it again and again. But one of the first, I just remember looking back, like one of the first um, beliefs that uh, came up for me just in the context of of meeting David and the Course in Miracles was um, a belief that my family or the people that I, I love would suffer as a result of me taking my steps on the spiritual journey. So, um, and in particular at the time, my husband, who really wasn't into the Course, he supported me being involved in the Course, but, you know, um, yeah, he wasn't into it himself. And, and so when I just told him one day that I really wanted to just go fully for God and and you know that I was basically leaving him in my life in Idaho. It was pretty much a big shock for him, and and for me, you know, just having that belief of now he's really going to suffer. That um, I had to question that belief uh, quite extensively, and it felt to me like the instrument for peace was was just a perfect way of doing that. So even though I knew intellectually that you know that everything in this world is is actually i'm projecting out there you know to actually have the experience of being able to 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 know that and feel that at, in a deeper way so that i could change my mind i actually felt like i needed steps and it's it's interesting because i was just talking to a friend last night and and uh you know he was saying yeah i've i've studied you know non-dual teachings i've you know I've studied this teacher, I've studied that teacher, I've you know, spent years on this. I can tell you every single metaphysic uh, that's out there about non-duality, but at the end of the day, I, I don't feel happy and I don't feel peaceful, you know? And so really just knowing all of this stuff doesn't get you home, so to speak. And I feel like what gets us home really is, is doing the lessons, is using these tools is joining with our brothers is bringing up whatever it is going through that darkness to the light i mean that's what the course says it's very non-compromising in that way and telling us that it is our mind that is generating everything in the world and truly you know wouldn't it be beautiful if we could really see that you know that this we could really make a game out of it that we could watch our feelings and and notice if we feel that tinge of pain or a contraction or whatever like okay there must be a belief down there that's ready actually to be looked at and to be released and boy you know once you are able to to see it in that way you know what a change it is from when it was you know growing up you know we were never given these 
tools. I mean, we were never told that it was our thoughts and beliefs that are causing us pain, you know, so of course we would try to avoid, you know, do everything we can to just avoid or distract away from whatever's going on. But, you know, now that we do have tools and now that we are, you know, able to see that there, there's, there are thoughts and beliefs running things underneath the show, so to speak, then, then it is, you know, that we're able to sort of go towards that. And um, I just came across a, a beautiful section of the course the other day when I was um, listening to David's um, reading of the text and, and the uh, lesson. And it's in um, chapter seven. It's called The Unbelievable Belief. But this is, I felt like it really sum, sums up the, for me, the motivation for looking at these beliefs and, and the importance of, of that as well says, do not be afraid of the ego. It depends on your mind, and as you made it by believing in it, so you can dispel it by withdrawing your belief from it. Do not project the responsibility for your belief it on it onto anyone else, or you will preserve the belief. So that is really talking about projection, like whenever we think somebody out there or something out there is doing it to us, it actually keeps it in place. So, I mean, that is an important part of this journey. When you are willing to accept sole responsibility for the ego's existence, you will have laid aside all anger and all attack because they come from an attempt to project responsibility for your own errors. So really with these mind tools, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but all it really is helping you do is to take whatever you're seeing out on the screen back into your minds, like, oh, wow, I'm doing that. <laughs> but not in order to feel bad, and it's not in order for you to feel guilty, but in order to bring back that thought so that you can actually do something about it. So having the, accepted the error as yours, do not keep them. Give them over quickly to the Holy Spirit to be undone completely so that all their effects will vanish from your mind and from the sonship as a whole. And I mean, it really is that simple, truly, but not in a metaphysical understanding way. It actually, you have to feel it. And this is part of this process of really like praying into, okay, what am I feeling? And, and describing those, giving yourself the time and the spaciousness to say, okay, I'm feeling angry. No, actually I'm feeling rageful. You know, uh, am I feeling sad? No, I'm feeling depressed. It's like, you know, really honing in on, on what the feelings are, you know, honing in on what the thoughts are, who's to blame, who you think is to blame, what you're afraid is going to happen into the future. Um, and then really kind of the, where, where the rubber, rubber meets the road, so to speak, is the, the actual be belief itself. But really, the whole process and these mind tools are all um, for this process that Jesus describes in this section of the course to be able to take it off the screen back into your mind so that you can see that you're the one that's, that's doing it to yourself and then, in, and then giving it over quickly to the, to the Holy Spirit. So, so it's like a real practice and it really is like, like exercising, you know, a muscle that you really, you know, have to continue using these tools much like you would, you know, practice doing anything, uh, a new skill or, or just even just, you know, working out or whatever, like you really have to practice it. And ultimately, you know, you're, you're going to be able to do it in an automatic way whenever you feel that tinge of pain and always knowing that the tools are right there to help you and support you uh, when when you need them and and I know for myself even though I, I use the tools all the time there are certain times where I'm really feeling you know I'm convinced that something is happening out on the screen like I can't I, I need help you know I need a walking through the process and and also, the, the tools are, are, are aware of what the obstacles are in the mind so that it's asking me the, those questions, you know, like, 
do you want to be right or happy? <laughs> you know, like, and a lot of times we want to be right, <laughs> you know, and that even just knowing that is like good news because, because then we can, when we get tired of being right <laughs> or, you know, the pride wears down or whatever, then we're able to go back and, and, and complete the process. And one of the things that's happened just even in the Living Miracles community because of um, these mind tools and, and because of, you know, Spiri is that it really has become part of our, the culture of Living Miracles. If somebody has something come up, one of the first questions that's asked is, has, have you done a mind tool? Have you used the instrument for peace, levels of mind, Spiri? Have you done a Spiri? And, and the purpose of that, even if there's, there's still an upset there, is, is have, you given, have you paused and given yourself time to, to go within and, and ask yourself what the thoughts and beliefs are? Because if you're looking outside for, oh, you tell me what's wrong with me, that's, not, that's really not what the course is all about. And that's not really what Jesus is calling on us to do. It's really this invitation, no, go within and, and really start asking these questions and, and getting in touch with what's going on in the mind. And, and this is truly empowering because, you know, if, if we're just afraid and we ask Jesus to take the fear away, you know, that's, it's like Jesus is very clear that he can't do that. You know, the only thing that he can, can do is to help to remove the conditions that are giving rise to the fear. Like, and what are those conditions? Some belief, some thoughts in the mind that are, that are false, that we're thinking are true, and then we're projecting it out into a world. So, I mean, this is just hugely empowering. Um, we know that all intellectually, if we've been following this path for any length of time, but to actually put it into practice, I feel like that's what Living Miracles is all about. And, and even the people who say, I, how do I stay connected with Living Miracles? How can I stay connected with you guys? It's really by doing this work, <laughs> you know, and, and if you're not able to move through an upset, um, like with the Spiri process, uh, those of you that use it, you know that there's a prayer and support at some point along the way. If you're not able to move through something, it is about a joining with a brother, like to help us to really fine tune uh, what it is that we're looking at, because it's so helpful um, to join at some point. But but it's the invitation with these tools is no, give it a try yourself really practice, really pray, really feel into, you know, what, what it is, where the contraction is. And, and it's just truly, in my mind, um, like this Spiri uh, video that I showed at the beginning, being a beginning of the show, like, wow, you really have, you know, these guidance with you wherever you go, and you can use it that way. And you can really use it in a, you know, inspiring, um, empowering way and the app that we're developing now is is really uh that that uh app that you see in the video like okay how you feeling type it in not only are you, are you going to be invited to use the the mind tools but also you're going to be given content like okay i really think that 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 the problem is out there help me to see it differently so these videos youtubes um, audios, um, other movies, suggested movies, all of this will be coming uh, at you in suggestions as, as ways to help, help you to see it differently. I did want to spend a few minutes just talking about what all of this is based on. What, is, what are all these mind tools based on? And, and I know that many of you have seen the, um, the levels of mind diagram. If, Nicholas, can you put that up just as a point of reference? So uh, we'll give you the, the link to this, uh, this form uh, at the end of my show, but I just want to 
to have um, this up on the screen for all of you to see because this is what Spiri is taking you through. This is what the instrument for peace is taking you through and, and the levels of mind itself is, is really a map of the mind and, and how, it, how the mind works. Um, it's something that this, this particular diagram um, was a download that David received directly from Jesus and it is just extremely powerful. Um, I could say that sometimes you're able to go through a, an upset just by looking at this diagram and seeing that it, you know, that there's something you're seeing on the perceptual screen is, is because of a belief. But I, I find myself that it's more helpful to actually use theory or, or the instrument for peace itself. So out on the outer layer there, it's called perception, is whatever it is that the upset is at the time. And you just, all you need to do really is to just pay attention to how you feel. And at that level, if you ever feel a tinge of pain, whether you're, you know, out on the street, you're talking to somebody or watching a movie, that's where the pause, you know, an invitation to like pause to pray and to actually identify what the upset is. And, and it's just really usually a, an obvious thing. <laughs> you know, I got fired today. You know, that's, it's, it's like not rocket science, but we can't like, oh, I know that I'm, I feel like I'm, a, I'm separated from God. <laughs> you know, the mind is, it doesn't do anything. We have to really work with where the mind is at. I got fired today. That's the perception. That's what I think happened. Um, and then really dialing into what the motion is. I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm angry. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed. And again, uh, the emotions are important and, and there are actually um, sample emotions in Spiri. And that's one of the nice things about Spiri is it's giving you examples all at every step of the way um, so that you can fine tune, you know, your feelings and thoughts. I, I think that at the thought level, my boss is to blame. Um, again, we can't like uh, basically ghost over uh, the blame side of things. Usually we think someone's to blame. Um, and a lot, oftentimes it's ourselves. We think we're, we're the ones to blame. So we just start right where the mind is at. And then also what is it that we might fear will happen in the future? with something like getting fired, it might be that I'm gonna lose my house. I'm gonna, you know, be out in the street. <laughs> so yeah, just really dialing into what the, what the um, fear is in the future. And then really the belief is, is where, in my mind, most of the prayer should go, like really getting touch, in touch with what it is I think is, is true, like, um, you know, and maybe in this case that, you know, I'm, I'm a loser. Like, I can't keep a job. I can't, you know, I, I really can't provide for myself. I'm just, you know, I'm a loser. And here's a, more proof, you know, I, that I can't even hold a job down. I can't, you know, I can't pay my bills. So, um, and then uh, in this particular process, we really want to get in touch with what we what we desire, what it is that we wish would happen. And, and typically, and most of the time, it's the exact opposite of what happened. So, so again, in this particular example, it could be that I, I wanted to keep my job. Obviously, you know, I, if, if I had, would, what was able to keep my job, then I wouldn't have to be looking at all of these feelings and these fears and blame and blah, blah. But we can see that when we have a tool like this, um, it's actually, you know, the purpose of this whole world is really for these beliefs to come up. And here's a good example. Wow. Under this, under this particular upset is this belief that I'm a loser, which I'm ready to actually question. And that's, where the, this process takes us at this point of, uh, you know, what is the belief that I think I have? What is it that I wish had happened instead? And then, then we're asked in this process, do I, you know, do I want to keep this desire uh, or do I want the peace of God? Do I want to keep this belief that I'm a loser or do I want the peace of God? And, and in that prayer, and, and if the decision is the peace of God, then really it's just 
really okay, Holy Spirit, <laughs> help me to see this differently is really all that's needed. And that is the taking the responsibility back to the mind, seeing the part that, that I play in the problem, and then quickly giving, handing it over to the spirit. And it's as simple as that, really. And I just want to say too, like even in this process, you may have that belief, I'm a loser, come up 50 times. But each time, you know, the maximal healing is happening. Like in the Bible, I believe it says, you know, that you have to forgive seven times 70. <laughs> so that's a lot of forgiveness. But, but each time, um, there is more forgiveness happening. If the forgiveness and, and the healing is happening um, each time that a, a belief is, is brought to the light and questioned. So, so this is the process. And I, and I just, again, I, I know that many of you who are watching the program today are already using this process. And I just want to encourage you to continue to do that. The ones that are just seeing it for the first time, give it a try. You're, you'll know whether or not it's working by how you feel. And never really judge if you feel worse after the process. It's doing its job, really. It's, it's not always about, oh, wow, I feel great. Sometimes you do feel worse afterwards. But just knowing it's kind of like a dirty pan. You know, you scrub and scrub and scrub and all of this gunk comes up out of the pan. But it's really because all of it's coming up for, for actually healing. So it's truly, truly a powerful process. And um, I know for me, I, I just got back down to Mexico. I was up in Camas, Utah for, for several months. And when I would notice that I would have an upset, you know, one of the things I'd love to do is kind of go on a spirit date I take my phone and go to the coffee shop and just work through an upset. And it's just truly powerful. I'd be like, oh my God, I just had coffee with Spiri and I just had an unwinding from some deep, deep belief. And yeah, just kind of, I, I really feel like, you know, our show and this show is what I really truly want it to be is an opportunity for anyone that has, you know, wants to have that extra help in moving through an upset that I would love to, you know, and if you were open to like walking through the process with everybody else, it's just truly powerful. And we've done that in our community a number of times where we've come together and we've all done an instrument for peace. And then somebody who's still feeling the upset um, just comes to the front and, and we walk through it together. And yeah, just one of the amazing things that I've found with this process is that we all get to experience this healing. You know, it's like when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. And it's just such an impetus. So if, um, if any of you want, you know, some additional help at the end of um, the program today, uh, I'll have my email and just go ahead and send me uh, an email and uh, if you're okay with being on a show and sharing the process with everybody else, I, I just think it's just it's wonderful and it's wonderful for all of us to, to share share in the healing together. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Vivian. Yeah, so much. thank you. I guess I just want to share because I feel like um, you know, I've been working with Laverne too on the, the Spiri app a bit and uh, you know, based on the levels of mind. And you know, I just kind of feel like it's, it's really exciting stuff. We, we join in these deep conversations and um, where I can really feel like this spirit is so right behind this in an epic way. And I think it's just kind of getting reflected in these tools like, like Spiri. Um, we were talking and saying like, it's not that the technology leads the way, but actually the mind leads the way and that we've actually been calling for a new way, uh, an easy way to, to help us work with our upsets and work with our mind. And something like Spiri, the chatbot came along. I mean, it's, it's so amazing actually. Um, how that came along it it was like an absolute miracle um none of us had been working with like tech in that kind of way before or coding or anything like that but just in a matter of a few uh like weeks 
uh, or days even, like Laverne had this working prototype of the Spiri chatbot. And it was like, where did that come from? <laughs> you know, we couldn't even believe it. And we still can't believe it really. <laughs> it's just absolutely amazing. But yeah, so I was saying, it just feels like it's all a part of this like comprehensive awakening actually that I feel like we are moving into. I know David has like um, referenced Jesus before in the course saying like, you know, on, in this, on earth, there hasn't been a comprehensive awakening yet. But I feel like when we're joined in these tools, I feel like we're on the precipice of it. You know, it just kind of feels like, wow, this is, and it's, and it's my decision. It's not really about waiting for the world. It really is my decision. Am I ready to like really take it the whole way? So I just wanted to share that because something feels really exciting about that. <laughs> and yeah, just, yeah, I just, with everybody online here, I can feel you all and I can just feel you so joined in mind. Like we're all joined together in this purpose and we really want to take this the whole way. Like why delay? Why delay any longer? So um, yeah, just thank you. I feel you here with us. So, um, Huh. <laughs> and <laughs> I guess with that too, just mentioning again, Laverne showed the levels of mind and you can find that at levelsofmind.com. And what else did we have? <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you both, actually. That's just so beautiful to hear. And I, I just love what you said, Laverne, because you said that this is the best way for everybody to stay linked in. And there's a, a lot of questions of how can we join in with you guys more deeply? And and really, this is it. It's doing the inner work. And Spiri is just such a very practical way. Like you can do it at any time. You have an upset, you know, pull over in your car or you're awake at three in the morning and your mind is spinning, like pull out Spiri. It's so practical and it's so helpful. It just guides you right down so gently and so lovingly. There's so much care that's gone into it. So um, I really encourage you all to check it out. If you've not tried Spiri before, really just check it out and give it a try. Because um, like really this one tool is... You can you you can use it for everything. So, yeah, thank you again so much, so much, Laverne and Peter, for your sharing. And and, uh, and next up, we've got a brand new show <laughs> <laughs> called the Leap. It's a really beautiful um, new take. It's using quantum and quantum physics to approach awakening. And um, yeah, I've got to share. I was I was joining with Susan about it the other day, and she was just so lit up. So I've got to say, I'm I'm super excited. And of course, um, she'll be joined by David this week. So so stay tuned, and we'll be on in just a few more minutes. Yeah, ten minutes time. So we'll see you then. Hey, welcome back, everybody. So we're here once again, and now we're going to be joined with uh, Susan and uh, her episode of Leap. Get ready to take a quantum leap with Susan. And special guest, David Hoffmeister. Is it over to me? There we are. I see we're up there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> I have to say that it's really feeling electric in this room right now. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I was just really in prayer earlier before I came in around just just really being shown what this was and why I was even doing this and what it was that was that, that, that this was for me and I could really feel something coming up strong around yeah basically that around that the spirit has been talking to me my whole life and seeing that I grew up actually in a family where in a way science was gospel like math was gospel um, analytical thought was gospel and I really believed that you know and I became went into science myself I did a lot of university and a lot of different sciences and it was a big thing like I really thought this was my way to to know something And that what the, the realization I had in the room just a few minutes ago, and I had all these tears of gratitude for it, was like, oh my gosh, like the spirit's been talking to me through science. And I didn't even know, like not until probably more recently I started to feel something. So I feel like that, that's, that's what's underneath this show is really wanting to share from that place in my heart 
that there is this opening happening and this deepening happening in my relationship with with God, <laughs> and spirit, um, I don't know what you want to call it, love. But it's coming through quantum physics. <laughs> so it feels very, very radical, like very radical, like just out of, like way out of the box radical. <laughs> and that's the passion that I want to speak from on this show. I want to just stay there in my heart. And if I can just stay there, then I feel like I've, you know, I've done my job, so to speak. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, I feel like on this, this show we'll be probably just sharing from experiments and just th things that really rock my world, like just like blow my hair back. Um, <laughs> I haven't used that expression in a long time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, that there's something about, I was talking with Francis earlier about this and just saying, oh, you know, part of this passion is I, I love to read about things that are just mind blowing. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I got to share that. Like, I just want to share this. Like this really throws everything up into question that we think is actually happening. Like, I love that. I feel, I really feel a vibrancy with that. So So yeah, um, yeah, and, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, quantum physics is, is a study really in science of teeny, eensy, weensy particles. They're so small that they're way smaller than what we can see, and, and it's just been science studying it using scientific methods that the world agrees on. You know, it's not weird science, like, how do I put it? It's like they're using conventional science to study something that is showing up as saying that conventional science is actually wrong, which sounds a little bit weird. And I think at some point we'll probably go into that, <laughs> what, what that even means, but, but yeah. So it's really going down to the, the core, the building blocks of all matter, everything that we perceive, abs absolutely everything without question that comes through our senses is subject to what can get talked about here because it's at the very core, the very building blocks. So, so I don't know. I think that's just in a nutshell. And 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 yeah. And I am a I'm a Course in Miracles student as well. So I have a pathway of that looks really really different from quantum physics. <laughs> it's really about it's really about one will, being willing to be wrong about everything I think and and uncovering beliefs in my mind to begin questioning them. And that's, that's kind of the, the essence of that. So I feel like at some point, you know, I feel like the spirit has some, some, something to say here about all of it. Um, yeah, and I did feel inspired to invite David Hoffmeister on my first show. Not really knowing how, how it's gonna go or what, what, <laughs> what's gonna transpire, so I feel like I'm just gonna leave it up to, up to that. But, Yeah, I'm starting to draw a bit of a blank, so it could be time to bring David in to <laughs> the conversation. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just, I don't know, David, you and I were talking about this in the room earlier, just some of these ideas and, and, uh, and I was just saying how, how much I wanted to feel the heart in the science, which is such a radical thing. It just doesn't, mm -hmm. the world doesn't make, like, you hear physicists talk about, there, there's no, like, tears of gratitude, you know, like, it, it just mm -hmm. doesn't, you just don't see it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I want to go on this show. Like, I want to go into the heart of it or something. And yeah. I just wanted to start there, I guess. Yeah, well, I think if we talk about going into the heart of it, to me, there's a great passion 
with this deep desire that seems to be deep inside of human beings to know what is what is going on. I want to know what this is all about. I want to know the answers to questions. And um, I think at the very beginning, we could say that, um, that, that science comes out of this desire to know the whole field of science and that spirituality, or, and some people call it religion, either term you want to use is, is comes out of a desire to know mm-hmm. the answers and so forth and to have uh, direction and possibly some instruction. And then of course, the third one that comes to mind is philosophy. And mm-hmm. so uh, both of us were in university for a long time. And um, the really, of, I think those three all come together with the same passion to know mm-hmm. what this is all about, what this world's about, who am I, how do I relate to in the whole, in the cosmic sense of things, uh, a desire for meaning, uh, almost like Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, that, that basically spirituality, religion, slash religion, philosophy, and science attempt to give us answers. So there's the same passion that's underneath all three. And then when I studied uh, philosophy, I mean, I studied many different philosophies, and the one that kind of, boom, lit my heart up, that blew my hair back, back in the day when I <laughs> had hair. Uh, I remember I was in a philosophy class, and I remember they, they, were, they went to this German philosopher named Immanuel Kant, and, and his big question, one of his main questions was, how do we know what we know? And I thought, that's a good question. How do we know what we know? And I'd never ask that question. I would just wanted to know, but how do we know what we know? And then he got a little more deeper with it. Is it, is it a priori, is it prior to our five senses or does it come through our five senses? Can we know what we know through the five senses or prior? And I was like, prior, prior, what's that even mean? And it's like, well, that, that you already know before you're even born before you even seem to come to this world, you actually have the answers somehow in like a a soul or some intuitive way or something that you already know all the answers before you even seem to come here. And I thought, so anyway, he basically said that that's what it is. He he said, you know what, you know everything before you even come before there are five senses, you know, everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, now science wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Um, initially, most of what we know is science and, and even religion and spirituality. You know, we have someone like Jesus is saying, before Abraham was, I am. But maybe that phrase could be knowing it before time, before linear time, there is an, an I am this, something that can be known. And it's, it's everything, but it's not like there's a lot of um, religious leaders that even talk so much about the I am presence. Maybe Jesus of all the ones talked the most about it. So it's exciting, the, the experiments that you, that blew your hair back, the, the uh, experiments that were like mind-blowing to me, those were all helpful in my journey of awakening of coming to peace of mind and and this bursting joy the kind of joy where the tears just roll down your face it's so explosive it's so wonderful and i think that we can start off this leap show by saying that you you really do have to take that leap of faith the leap of trust to be shown to have it revealed to you what what is real and what is true. It's not like uh, you can read it in a book. It has to be an actual direct experience. Mm -hmm. And I know for you that that's what excites you is the the direct experience, the feeling in the core of your being and your heart. That's that's what you live for. And Mm -hmm. so we we share that, you know, Mm -hmm. and and we want to share that with with everyone here Mm -hmm. today. Yeah.
Yeah. I mean, what what's coming to mind is just how, like going back to how, how much, yeah, just how much these findings that have, have been, you know, like it's like things just started to reveal themselves in, in this physics. Like they didn't, they didn't know what they were getting into in a way, like, you know, back, back, I don't, whenever this started many, many years ago, it's like five decades at least. Yeah. 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 And, and that there was, yeah, we were just talking about how it was almost like, like there was a massive paradigm shift that the world maybe wasn't ready for, but, but that the, these, what they were finding in these experiments were actually pointing to a massive paradigm shift. So in a way it was like, I think the scientists were not really knowing what to do with it. Like they're kind of like, well, yeah. this is interesting. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they were blown away as we, yeah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Niels, Niels Bohr, Bohr who was mm -hmm. one of the, mm -hmm. one of the founders, one of the first real quantum physicists. He said, mm -hmm. if, if these findings haven't shocked you, then you don't understand them. Yeah. You know, just that word shock. Yeah. So that's the, that's sort of the extent of, of just how radical this stuff really was. And I feel like it's kind of like now, like it's almost like there's a readiness or something to begin to even just, just to stop blowing past this stuff, to actually stop with it and just start to let it sink in a little bit, like what this is really saying, Yeah. you know, about the nature of reality and yeah. Cause yeah. It, if, if you go, if you do not to, go into anything too specific, but if you go into some of these experiments, they're showing things like particles just vanishing from existence for no reason and then popping back into existence. Now that mm. our day-to-day -day experience, we don't really have, you know, I, mean, I guess maybe once in a while, <laughs> but yeah. it doesn't really happen. For me, it doesn't happen. And so it's like, wow, like I wanna, I wanna know more about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah cause that, that rocks my world yeah. when I hear about that. Yeah. And so that's saying something about the nature of, of reality. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, what really draws us deeper is what maybe we're at first shocked by something or astonished mm -hmm. or startled uh, or surprised. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, science or spirituality or relationships or whatever. There's something that, that is, is so amazing that it really gets our attention. You grew up, grew up in a, a scientific environment. I wouldn't say my family was necessarily scientific. You know, they were church going family, more of a Christian, traditional Christian family in that sense. And, and then as we go through our childhood and adolescence and into adulthood, we have certain interests. We're drawn in certain directions. And, and uh, I was very, drawn to science i felt a lot like a lot of my religious training i i kind of took it with a bit of tongue in cheek like mm -hmm. well i don't actually know if all this stuff in the bible and you know, all these things i'm being taught in bible school is true or not and then when i got i was a fan of science i was a mm -hmm. baseball fan i was a basketball fan i was a fan of science because i felt it was more systematic and I felt like I, w I could follow the reasoning of the scientist. And I thought, this, this is good. I'm, I'm a fan. So I went into it. Um, it probably, if, if people had interviewed me in my years in, in undergrad and, and even in grad school, I would say that, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of science. I like the methodologies. I like the, the rigorous um, looking at things not mm. don't tell me stuff that happened 2000 years ago or 4000 years ago maybe it did maybe it didn't i would put a lot of um religion religious uh and spirituality i would put it in the mythology camp initially mm. and science i thought mm. oh, i i'm you've got my ear but then when i went deeper into science and i think probably i was right around grad school when i started to uh, open up to to quantum and to this new science that was coming. I was astonished mm -hmm. that 
that what the quantum physicists were talking about felt very intuitive. And I was like, oh my God, these, this, they're discoverers of something that's very important. And basically I could see it was overthrowing the, the scientific method, which was all based on empiricism, which was all based on the philosophy that you know what you know through the five senses and you experiment on the world like Isaac Newton had done and you draw your conclusions from your evidence. Mm -hmm. I was a fan of that. Then the quantum physicists came and when they started doing experiments that showed that the world wasn't out there, it wasn't apart from consciousness. Mm -hmm. I was just getting interested in consciousness and they were all their experiments were showing that there's no world apart from the perceiver, that you can't get the experimenter out of the experiment. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. what? I have a fan of science, but if you're showing me with experiments that you can't get the experimenter out of the experiment, all that rigorous double blind experiments, everything was to make it, you know, so authentic and so tight that, that there was no human error that would enter into the scientific method. And then suddenly the mind of the experimenter, the mind of the scientist was influencing Mm. the results of the scientific method mm. i was i was like that's just taking all objectivity which i loved mm. i was a big fan of objectivity not opinion objectivity and suddenly it was saying everything that we've done with all these experiments is, and all this data that we've been collecting for generations is all subjective and i thought subjective Based on, based on the beliefs, the whims, the preferences, mm -hmm. that a particle would show up in a, one of these tiny little particles you mentioned, it would show up where the experimenter, the science, scientist's mind expected it to show up, mm -hmm. that it wasn't predictable except <laughs> that it showed up where the scientist wanted it to show up, mm -hmm. where the scientist believed it would show up. And you know, the, the, this different experiments that you and I were subjected to were all showing this that the observer the observer effect was huge to me that was what quantum was all about and then the more I got into it they described the quantum field which sounded very much like Rumi's the great poet mm -hmm. Rumi's there's a field I'll meet you there meet that's what everything met in the quantum mm -hmm. field everything was completely connected and I started to think wow that is unification that's what forgiveness is about. Mm -hmm. That's what joy is about. That's what happiness is about. Everything is connected and beyond connected, everything is one. I was like, mm -hmm. finally, there, there's a science that's taking the mind to self-realization, to self-actualization, Meso called it, towards know thyself that the Greeks, I thought, oh my God, it's all going to the same place. There's nothing out of accord here. There's mm. nothing missing. It's all here. It's pointing to the same place. I was like, hallelujah. You know, that was my, my feeling. And then to live that, to me, became more than, than all the theories that kind of point to it. It's just like, wow. Hi, everyone. It looks like we're having some internet um, difficulties coming from Mexico. Let's see if it uh, comes. I would like to Here live. <laughs> <laughs> a word from our sponsor. You guys are fine now. Sorry for about two minutes there with the picture frozen, so I thought I'd jump in, but you're back. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear us? Command Central. And Can, testing, testing. <laughs> High on the mountains. 
Thank of you. the Andes, it's right? <laughs> we will now call the observer Jeff. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> I just have this big <laughs> smile on my face. I don't know if they can still hear me. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, because I was last night. I was in. I was also in prayer around this, and just again, just feeling a little like baffled by it. Almost like I don't know where to go. I don't know what to talk. About, you know, I don't know. And then I, I opened my Facebook, and then something popped up on my screen, which just kind of really caught my attention. It was a line, which I think is from, I think it's actually from the Gospel of Thomas, and it says, "Be passers by." And I think that was just, I think you called it the shortest teaching of Jesus that he mm -hmm. ever had. Maybe, mm -hmm. Well, I think he had judged not to. Judge not. Yeah, those. I, maybe they're the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and I was like, oh, okay. So is there something here about this? Like you're talking about just, you know, that there's this pathway into an experience of the unified field where, where all is one. Yeah. And then at some stage, the observer effect is where you start to see that, oh my gosh, like this is, this is my mind, actually. This, yeah. Maybe this isn't actually happening out there, so to speak. Maybe this is yeah. actually just, just thoughts, just beliefs, you know, whatever you want to call it. And, and my pathway to that oneness might, this might give a clue, actually, as to yeah. how to get there. Yeah, so. I think in scientific terms, you know, all of science taught us that to look at cause and effect and that the cause came first and the effect came second. Mm. And even in typical physics, for every action there's a reaction and you know there's it's very much about linear time and understanding linear time. Whereas I feel quantum physics is the doorway, the portal, the gateway into the experience that cause and effect are together. They are not separate. And so that brings everything back to what if time itself is not linear, if it's simultaneous? And what if there is no difference between the observer and the observed? You know, that, that is not a question that would even come up in Newtonian. You know, the observer is, is ob observing experiments and drawing conclusions based on this linear cause effect uh, world and cosmos and all the relationships are, are have cause effect in a linear way mm. So I would say that what spirituality if you go all the way with whatever spirituality you're using and it's authentic it will show you that That cause and effect are together that there is no difference between perceiver and perceived There is no difference between observer and observed Everything is completely unified and there is nothing apart from anything else. Fragmentation was the illusion, and the reality of what you actually can know is unity, is unification. Mm -hmm. It's very practical, and the other thing about it is, is that you don't, once you start to see that there's no difference between the perceiver and the perceived, or that you can't get the perceiver out of the perceived world, that it's all always the same, all your questions vanish. Every question mm -hmm. vanishes. It's just a state of of unification and, and happiness and peace and joy. And there's not a single question that remains. Mm -hmm. And this is also what Jesus talks about, how that consciousness is unified as well. It, it seems through the ego like it's fragmented and there's different levels. And it seems like there are different people and with private minds and private thoughts and there's seven billion different perspectives going on through the eyes and ears and the, the little human perceivers that's not real either it's really just one experience and then you start to break down all it starts to mess with psychology too because psychology would say there's a world there's a perceptual world but then you can choose how you want to interpret that actual world is that as if there's like a solid actual physical world and you have something in your mind that can interpret that mm -hmm. and what we're learning from quantum physics the course in miracles all mystical experiences show you that's not the case that there's not 
something that interprets the physical world, that the physical world that's perceived is actually an interpretation. Mm. It is the interpretation. There isn't an, an interpretive mechanism. Mm. And you're never upset by anything in form. You're upset by the whole interpretation. So as long as your interpretation is egoic and fragmented, you, you will have upsets. It will come and come and come again. And once you realize that you don't have the power to break it up, that it can't be broken up, that it's not really like fragmented at all, then that is the end of all your problems, really. Mm. And so that's <laughs> huge. <laughs> you know, to the, most people say, well, you have no problems. Well, that would be nice. That's wishful <laughs> thinking. But actually, if you go all the way in quantum physics and you're very intuitive and you follow it all very deeply, it, it will first shock you and then it will dissolve the you that it seems to be perceiving. Mm. And it's, it's gone. Everything's gone. But it's joyful. <laughs> it's great. It's like the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool because I actually had some questions written down. I think you answered them all. <laughs> so, and I realized I didn't bring them with me. So. Right when they give us the yeah. power, our minutes are counting down. Okay, let's answer it all right here. Let's, on the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. first, the first episode, let's do it. Uh, I see our MCs are over there ready to move into action. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, it just all feels really, yeah, really beautiful to me. I just wanted to thank everyone for, for tuning in. <laughs> I see all these happy faces up there. and I don't know, it just feels like a journey. Everyone's on the same journey together to, to really look at these deep questions together so I, I just fully join join you in that and just really grateful for David to be on my show uh, and thank you for having <laughs> join me, me in, yeah, this first first show you know <laughs> premiere <laughs> someone called it so just, just really really grateful for all of it so thank you see you next time <laughs> Wow, that was really fresh. Thank you, guys. Thank you both. I just love the fresh take on awakening. You know, like the the course language is is so specific, and you know, Jesus and God and all of that stuff. And I just find sometimes the terminology mixing it up a little bit, and just meeting it is such a or meeting it from a different um, school of thought even is so helpful um, to just remind that that's the direction we're all heading anyway. So, yeah, thank you guys so much. Really beautiful. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about quantum physics and the way that it relates and course and the way that it, they just marry together, there's a fantastic book through, that's come through David called Quantum, uh, quantum Forgiveness, Physics Meet Jesus. And um, it's exactly what we've been talking about now. And um, there's a number of, of movies in there that are featured as gateways and portals into a deeper experience of those teachings. So um, yeah, there was a, um, a really beautiful video that was showed just before uh, the show started and there's more information available and um, definitely MWGE is another fantastic portal where you can find all of those movies um, and the reviews that, that are shared about in the book. So. And that book is also available in Spanish. I think, Perdón Quantico? Sí. Sí. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Okay, well, I think we'll mention our next coming up program. Um, we're going to have Soren coming up, and he's going to be interviewing Francis about the upcoming documentary they're working on. <laughs> so stay tuned. Um, that will be in another about 12 minutes' time, and we'll see you then. Hi guys, welcome back. So I just wanted to introduce the next segment um, with uh, Soren and Francis. We're just very lucky to hear about this upcoming documentary. So I'll just pass it straight over to them. Yeah, welcome to this interview. Uh, this has been um, a long time. Uh, decide for me to eventually interview Francis in public. <laughs> 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 and, um, but before we go on, uh, I would like to 
Nicholas to show a little video. Many, many years ago, I, um, I, had, I woke up one morning from, from a dream that in the dream I was told that I'm to be involved in making a documentary film. And over about a year after, after that dream, I was asking, you know, when is that going to happen? And I heard, it's done. It's already done. I will send you my team, but you don't have to think about it. I thought, oh, okay, that's good. <laughs> so fast forward to that, from that point, I think it's another maybe four or five years, this 70-year-old um, award-winning, world-renowned cinematographer who made 130 movies in his life from Portugal said he heard to free his calendar for the whole month of May to come and help us make a movie. And I thought, wow, seems like now is the time and the team is set. <laughs> that was about a year ago and around the same time I was doing a tour in Europe and um, I had an invitation in, from August, Denmark, the second largest city in, in Denmark. And instead of accepting the invitation, I actually heard, go to Copenhagen. So we, I posted a message on Facebook and saying, I'm open to come to Copenhagen in case there's anyone. <laughs> and this guy responded immediately and saying, I have a center that hasn't been used for a long time. I really want to devote it to A Course in Miracles. Come to my center. So he hosted me and I said, what, what's your, what do you do? He said, I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> and that was how Francis Sue ended up in Copenhagen. And that was how my assignment with Francis started. <laughs> yeah. So when you met me in Copenhagen in the summer of 2016, I was kind of uh, I was I was not really in a good spot because I was just kind of surfacing from a breakup with my former spiritual community and I was part of this center we saw there as a kind of a something we did in order to have some kind of community after that breakup but I really felt like I was it was a kind of sleep I wasn't in a kind of sleepwalking and uh, so what I did really was I, I had to do something. <laughs> and when I saw your Facebook thing, I just, it, I, I did actually just respond very, uh, I didn't really thought about it because I, I have for a long time wanted to have a course of miracles in, the, in that center. And this seems to be a good you know, opportunity to do that. So, yeah. And at that time, I was actually setting up my own movie project. I was going to Costa Rica with five Danish people. I want to document that. And when you mentioned the, the mystery school project, at that time, I didn't really, it didn't really sink in. Uh, it was first after half a year when you called again that, uh, oh, this is real. And uh, I, have, I really had to consider, you know, the implications of being part of that movie project. But eventually, you know, uh, I came to Utah in April in 2016. And um, 
just to give people a little bit of context for what what the movie product is. So in the movie, we follow six or seven characters going through a transformational pro uh, process, and I'm one of them. <laughs> uh, so. So the basic setup for this movie uh, team that is coming together before this whole mystery school starts uh, is that we are going to follow, listen and follow you as a director of the movie project. But the peculiar thing is that you have no idea of making movies. And you do. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> And uh, so, so your basic, you know, the basic uh, stance is that we are not here to make a movie. We're here to be happy. And, uh, and if we are not following you, we won't be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Have you always been that confident? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no, I mean, the thing is, for this movie, it's, it's, you know, I was also finding out what my function was because my happiness and my function are one. So I, in order to be happy, I was constantly praying for what is, um, what is my my function so I guess for the movie when um, I was I started to realize I was the director it wasn't kind of immediate for me to accept that role because I wasn't prepared for that um, I was waiting for someone to be able to take the role so that I can be the inspiration and support behind that and about, I think we waited and waited until almost like 10 days, 15 days before you guys, the movie team uh, was gonna arrive. Then all these decisions about equipment, where to rent, we have to buy hard drive, do we shoot in 4K, what cameras, do we have the speed to download? All these very specific decisions have to be made immediately. Do we have the funds to buy, how expensive? And, and I realized nobody was gonna move on it unless I do, and I was the one. So it was like, okay, I have to step up to make all those decisions. And what happened was for me, before that, I, I started to experience like a week or two feeling a bit flat and uninspired. And the moment I step, stepped out, stepped up into that function, all of a sudden, all the inspiration came back. So that made, made it very clear I was the director. So I Googled what does the director do <laughs> for a movie. And it just, it, it was so overwhelming. Basically, absolutely everything, you make decision for everything. And, and clearly we had so many logistical decisions to make and I didn't think I was the one. So I remember my assistant at the time, Helena, she was very good at research. She did a lot of research. She contacted Acasio, the 70-year-old um, cinematographer who made 130 movies at the time about all kinds of specifics. And I just realized the more we got into research and there was no answer. It was so hard to make any decision because the research showing this way and then the next research was showing that way and we couldn't move forward at all. So pretty quickly, I think I realized I got to have to make a decision with the spirit and there is no other way. It doesn't really matter how technical it is. doesn't matter. I don't even know the technical term. I have to rely on the inner listening to the T and I have to not only do that, I have to call the team to follow what I hear because we didn't have the time to talk things through. We didn't have time to really go through all the research and your opinion, his opinion. And most importantly, that that was not the goal. 
the goal was that we come together to learn how to listen to the to the spirit and i thought my function at the time was i'm the one to receive because because i was the director so i'm the one to receive and i will receive as specific as i could and i will deliver and i will call everybody to to achieve that vision and the thing is what was difficult for me at the time was as a team leader i wanted to develop the relationship in a way that it was more around counseling and giving context and explain why we have to do this so that everybody can understand but i didn't really have the time because you know from six in the morning till about midnight there was like so many motions and and actions and decision and communication so i had to trust even that for the spirit okay if we follow your instruction everybody will be happy and it, it's not dependent on understanding it's not depending on explanation it's not dependent on anything but if we follow we we're happy let's go for that experience so that was all that I could rely on based on what was, you know, available. I was keep calling everybody, let's just do this. This is what I heard. And I know everybody had so much stuff going on and you being right, one of it. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, basically I was angry all the time. Yeah. More, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, because because somehow I didn't get it. I, I didn't get this uh, this and follow and uh, and and I felt I was a failure and I you know I felt abandoned. I felt all all these things comes up because I you know I came from this I know mind you know I already know this you know you know, just ask me, <laughs> but you didn't. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so on the contrary, you know, yeah. then, I mean, there was this victim feeling about it. And I wonder, because, you know, you, you had told me before that when you came into the monastery in the right of the beginning, you had, you had an, you know, kind of this experience where you change your attitude. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I can. I mean, I, you know, I, when I first arrived at the monastery, I was, yeah, having this rebel, you know, rebellious attitude toward following someone else, yeah. you know, and that was the, the seeming setup at the time because we have um, an experience, more experience, a volunteer who, who knows the monastery tasks very well, who pray and receive the guidance and deliver every morning. And the new volunteers, myself being one of them, would be willing to receive and, and use tasks to focus and also to, as a backdrop to, you know, if there's any beliefs or thoughts come up, we'll express. But it was not easy at the beginning because I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't liking it at all. And it was like a, a lot of attitude of who do you think you are by telling me what to do? And I want to be a leader. I, I didn't think I, I knew better because, yeah, those are some lab, physical labor work. I didn't know what to do, but I still, this attitude was there regardless. And um, until I kind of developed some kind of physical pain, and it was very difficult for me. So I was talking, yeah, talking to my friends and express. And one day I just thought, you know, I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to walk into that morning meeting today with a complete yes, like resounding yes from inside out and see what happens from that point. So when the, the leader of the volunteers um, gave me the direction. It was already a yes. There was nothing there that's blocking. And I felt so happy that day. And the next day, my task was taken away from me. I didn't need to continue repeating the action anymore. I was changed to do something on my own with, without a leader. 
it was just one day and that was done. But the lesson was learned. The lesson was learned. And I, it's just interesting because this morning I was meditating and I, list, I heard this song and I thought, oh, I could play this song here. But the, um, the beginning part of the song is, what is to be done, my dear brother? I don't know who I am. What is to be done, my dear sister? I don't know who I am. And I think that is like underneath all of it, we can say to the spirit, what is there to be done, spirit? I don't know who I am. You know, and I think that the pathway and the journey and even this movie is it means nothing. It really means nothing if it doesn't lead us to that place to know who I am. And unfortunately, you know, to, to reach that place, to truly say, Spirit, I am willing to do anything. It takes a lot of willingness and it, it takes a lot. And I know that you know, to put the pride aside, to put my knowledge aside, but what is past experiences? What is skills and status, you know? In the, in the movie, Lisa, which <laughs> I think was also your leader at that time, was it Lisa that was in the monastery? When I first arrived, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, so she's also in the movie. As a, as a director of the mystery school. And she has a conversation with Francis Romero, which is the head of the kitchen, until she is replaced by a younger model uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that has much less experience that she has. And uh, Francis Romero is really not liking that. And uh, she basically wants to go home because she can't find herself in that new role. So in that conversation, Lisa talks with Francis about, you know, that this is a chance for healing and, uh, and, and so on. And Lisa says, I want to go with you into the kitchen and do the work. And, and she doesn't mean do the kitchen work. What is the work? Yeah, I think, see, the thing is with the work of just following the guidance, you know, the way we do it, it is through relationships. That, that's why we talk about relationships a lot in, in this pathway and in the pathway of A Course in Miracles. So, Basically, all that it takes, all that it takes, all that I have been asking you throughout this whole month and even till now, since we're still working together, is that don't hold anything between us and don't hold anything between our connection. That's all it requires. However, to be able to do that, you know, there's past experiences, there's skills, there's why do you tell me you don't even know? There's judgment. And there is, I would like to be acknowledged and approved through my work. But all of this are standing in the way for you to realize you are acknowledged without your work, without anything. You don't have to do anything. And that is actually the hardest part for you and for anyone who's going through this undoing of self-concept all that is required is you don't have to do the way you do things. You don't have to rely on this past knowledge and, and skills and you think who you are and you can lay that all aside and just have an experience of a connection that never compromise in this moment. 
It doesn't mean in the future, it doesn't mean in the past, it just is this moment. Do you have judgment? Let's express it. Do you have attack box? Let's express it. Not everything will be melted away in this moment. And that is an experience that nothing can stand in the way of love. Absolutely nothing. No skill, no past experience, no judgments, nothing. And you are loved if you open up your heart. That is the message. So that is the work. The work is trusting this is what is truly about. And the trust I'm talking about, you're talking about having to trust one person. I tell you, it's not about the person. It's about through this love and connection, let's watch everything else melting away and have an experience that nothing means anything to that. After the mystery, after the shooting of the mystery school, I went back to Copenhagen and I was so inspired that I made a 52 minutes film <laughs> about my own experience. And uh, it was about this guy, me, who uh, had a hard time opening up to love. And uh, I showed it to you and you didn't really like it. And uh, so, so what is it for a story you really want to tell about this, with this movie? What is the story I want to tell? Yeah. I mean, I, I really like that the movie came from you as your fueled by your passion. The thing is when actually, when Soren arrived back here in Mexico to join with me in November, you said to me that I have to put myself on the line. I have to give something to the movie that I don't even know I have. And that was inspiring to me. And that is what this movie is for me. I'm not really trying to tell a story. <laughs> or We're having an end result that is this way or that way. What I want is to use this, this experience or this project to reach somewhere that the spirit want me to reach and to show it to the world, so to speak, and show it to, you know, <laughs> but it's the pulling of it that is what I'm, I'm inspired by. So that's why you're, I can't adopt a 50 minutes from you, what you made, and say that's just, it's not, in, it's not complete for me. It hasn't complete for me. So what happened was that after you did that, I showed, I have to say a lot of people loved it. And for me, it, it just felt incomplete. And I had, to, I had to sit with the computer on my own for months and months and really go there and, and ask the spirit, what is in me that you want me to see? So, uh, yeah, obviously this process, you know, that we are still in, um, has still, um, and we have, a, you know, still a lot to do. Um, so it, yeah, you have talked a little bit about it, but how is the process going for you now with the, with the movie? How is the process going? Yeah, yeah. So what has the process been for you? Oh, well, um, it's just very, it's very good because I, um, <laughs> you know, I just wait for the spirit to activate me and, um, because I had this kind of um, experience at first after the mystery school that I was so inspired, I want to get it done and have it pour out of me. And I, what I realized was that I can make it happen and I, I can sit in front of the computer. Then afterwards I will have doubt thoughts, I will go back and replace things. And it's just very, very slow. Versus the experience experiences that I also had, I, I don't do anything. 
And then all of a sudden I got inspired. I sit in front of the computer for three hours and it's done. And I never have any thoughts to look back. And it's good. It's almost like sometimes I think, well, maybe that's, the Bible says God created the universe and it's good. It's like, <laughs> it feels like that. It feels, mm -hmm. it's done and it's good. And I don't have any question about it. So for me, it is truly also a, a learning of be directed by the spirit so fully that that I don't have even a time agenda and I watch the movie, nothing happens for a long time and I do nothing in the meantime and just be patient and wait and have you been there waiting, say, Francis, what are you doing? And, and you know, and then also just enjoy the, the inspiration pouring through and passion pouring through and watch it manifest in terms of specifics so that's very rewarding and i am still in that process right now um, but also another part of it was watching the team member come and go with me um, and that is also very beautiful for myself that certain ones like yourself just there com like committed saying no matter what i was there with you and and there are others who feel inspired and there's a big support. And then they suddenly tell me, I don't feel inspired anymore. And I was like, you don't? What? And then I have to feel, okay, I'm on my own with the spirit. And now turning away from, from those team members to keep them informed, keep them updated. And when they come back, I'm inspired again, yes. So it's like, I feel it's a process for me to learn what love is, to never protect, never push away, and trust the spirit fully and learn that, like I said earlier, nothing, nothing can stop the love that I feel for you and for, for anybody on the team. So what's been the most difficult thing in this whole thing well <laughs> well that working with uh, a group of people is challenging because uh, I when I realized my function was not just receive but like I read down every specifics what I need to communicate in the morning meeting I write I wrote them down pretty quickly but but then when I deliver that and I'm watching the attitudes <laughs> and then uh, I have no time to explain to anyone and I just do this and have an experience. But also with people like you who think that you know a lot and, and truly I really don't know anything. So when I deliver and have a technician or ex experts telling me this can't be done, and I have to say, but this has to be done. Can you change your attitude and say, let's find a way? So it's like, a, for me, a, a very strengthening process, very strengthening, because it was very tempting for me to say, oh, okay, let's find another way. And, but I have to constantly remember that, but this is the guidance, and I have to find out. I have to find out a spirit's guidance works, and it's is above knowledge, is about what worked before. Even if we make a new genre, even if we make, I don't care. I just want to follow the spirit and bring you guys all with me in that. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> so in the, in, the, in the video we started out with, uh, you say quite early on, that you get the message that the movie is done. Yeah. You th still think it's done? I still think it's done because I, I have those experiences where when I receive a clear passion and inspiration, it's done. And I feel I really just have to find what is already written. I, I'm not really experimenting. You know, when I experiment, it wasn't really from the same place. And there is a place that I can tap into then I know it is, it is how it is. And there is no right or wrong, it's just how it is. 
and that is the place I, I, I want to tap into for everything. I think they keep giving us the time. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say in the end that I'm very grateful for the opportunity I've had to work with you and to know you. And uh, I hope it will never end. It's mutual. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, thank you. Thank you for such a wonderful window into this really, really spectacular project. And um, yeah, even just watching, I remember the first time I saw the, um, the teaser trailer, which you, you saw before Soren and Francis went live. I just, I just felt so deeply moved because it's such a, Wow, I don't know that I have the words for it actually. It's um it's really just such an honor to to witness what's happening and to hear everything that you're sharing, Francis, and your experience, Soren, with with just the way that it's being used so deeply by the spirit. It's so inspiring. So thank you so much. Yeah, it just feels like it's about really about the experience more than an end result about a movie or anything. So it's beautiful. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this concludes our broadcast day. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We, uh, we feel inspired to share a bit more about some of the, the upcoming events and just other things that are happening here. And um, so we'll flow into that now, but really just thanking you all for joining in, joining in today for our shows and, and tune in again next week, starting at uh, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time and a.m.? A.m. Not 10 p.m. <laughs> Tune in at 10 a.m. <laughs> and uh, we'll have uh, another five shows, some of which you've seen before. So, um, yeah, just let's stay connected. All right. So, yeah, we did just want to talk about what's coming up and um, also what's been happening uh, in the past month. So, um, for, you, for you who are new to us, uh, I'm Peter and this is Kristen. Hello. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we just wanted to talk about, yeah, extension has been like a big thing for us in the past month uh, here and also in all our centres. So, as you, as you might know, we uh, have our uh, online shows and they've been running every week and also our online retreats as well.